Good afternoon. This meeting is now uh, called to order. Um, let me direct the committee secretary to uh, acknowledge our source persons for this afternoon. Good afternoon. I would like to acknowledge our guests and resource persons for this afternoon's public hearing. I would like to acknowledge the presence of the mayor of the municipality of Morivales, Bataan, Mayor Ace Duelo Concepcion, and uh, Congressman Jose Enrique Garcia III from the 2nd District of Bataan, but he is represented by attorney Amante Liberato. <coughs> We would also like to acknowledge the presence of Engineer Manuel Pineda from the Authority of the Free Port Area of Bataan, from the Department of Finance, Director Judy Danofrata, from the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Edgar Tomas Oxilian, from the National Economic and Development Authority, Mr. Agustin Mendoza, from the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, Pesa Attorney Francis James Berliantes. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Attorney Marie Tanya Recalde. From the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, Attorney Marie Dane Dayan Espiritu. From the Philippine Ports Authority, Attorney Yasmin De Los Santos. From the Board of Investment, Mr. John Clemente. From the Bureau of Fire Protection, Chief Superintendent Domingo Tambalo. And Engineer Ariel Miranda. From the Government Service Insurance System, Attorney Lucio Yu Jr. And Attorney Apollo Vascares. From the Social Security System, Attorney Doreen Dasmarinas and Attorney Carol Tagino de Sorita. From the Government Commission for Government Owned or Controlled Corporation, GCG, Attorney Faye Condes. From the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, PAGCO, Attorney Rodrigo Silverio Jr. And from the Piet Rucha Manufacturing Philippines Incorporated, Mr. Robert and Chavez. All the resource persons have been acknowledged, Senator. Thank you, uh, Gomsek. Again, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for uh, coming all the way here to the Senate. Um, this afternoon, we'll be uh, discussing Senate Bill Number 1747. Uh, this is authored by uh, Senator Gordon. And the bill calls for the strengthening of the powers and functions of the AFAB, or the Authority of the Free Freeport Area of Bataan. Um, this afternoon, we would like to learn how this proposal will uh, benefit the people of Mariveles and the people of Bataan, as well as the country as a whole. And uh, we also like to understand uh, fully how this um, proposal will uh, interplay with the current uh, national policy, especially on fiscal incentives and also on governance. Um, I know some of you have attended um, the hearing in the lower house, and we would like to uh, maybe uh, would like to uh, encourage everyone to take advantage of this hearing. If you have other um, comments that were not uh, fully discussed or fully appreciated during the hearing in the lower house, uh, you may discuss it here. Uh, would like to uh, understand completely the. Uh, the benefits of this proposal and uh, we'd like to understand also the complexities of this proposal considering that uh, this administration has been um, embarking on a massive um, tax reform program. You know? So all of this have a lot of interplay so uh, we want to understand and uh, reduce friction between the national and the local governments, especially the IPAs, which is now in the limelight of this uh, tax administration. So um, with that, uh, I'd like to uh, start off with the proponents, of course, the direct uh, beneficiaries of uh, this proposal, uh, Engineer Pineda. I would like to uh, turn over the floor to you. Um, I know you have a presentation. No? Um, let's uh, go straight to the point. Uh, Give us a brief background of FAB, the Freeport uh, area of Bataan, and then, let, and then let's go straight to the point 
uh, uh, to the proposal. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. Uh, while waiting for our staff to set up the presentation, uh, we, we are of the knowledge that there will be an opening statement coming from our representation of the second district. Uh, if I may request. Yeah, we can uh, uh, hear the opening statement of um, the representative of Congressman Garcia. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, I represent uh, Congressman Jose Enrique Garcia of the 2nd District, and he requested me to read into the records his opening statement. With your permission, may I proceed? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank the committee led by its chairman, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, for holding this public hearing on a piece of legislation which we consider very vital in furthering the transformation of the province of Bataan as a free port hub and economic powerhouse. I would also like to thank Senator Richard Gordon for filing a counterpart bill, which incidentally we, prepare, we prefer compared to the House approved version. Based on our experience for the past several years, we firmly believe that economic zones with substantial incentives are definitely the most direct way of attracting investments and providing jobs to our people and eradicating poverty, especially in the countryside. The establishment of economic zones in our country should be encouraged and promoted by our government instead of limiting them. And in this hearing, we want to establish the fact that they greatly benefit our economy contrary to the claims of some national government agencies. The Freeport area of Bataan was established in 2009. It took over the operations of the Bataan Export Processing Zone, which was then under the Philippine Economic Zone Authority. Almost 10 years after its creation, the FAB has flourished to become the fastest growing Freeport among all investment promotion agencies in the country. We attribute this robust performance with the conducive business climate which the FARC provides and the competitive fiscal incentives it offers. The autonomous authority managing on the ground compared to the centralized PESA management in Manila has allowed FARC to be more responsive to the locators and workers. I have to emphasize that an independent and autonomous economic zone is imperative in addressing the peculiarities associated with business environments in the different areas of our country. That is why rationalizing the incentives of IPAs and having a central approving board such as that proposed in Trento does not make sense for this representation. It would be like reverting back far to PESA again. We also have to understand that we do not have a level playing field simply because the environment in each province is different in many ways. We can only rationalize if we have a level playing field. The farm now employs nearly 40,000 workers. From 2010 to 2016, FAB contributed to the economy a total benefit of 87.61 billion consisting of government capital spending of 864 million, salaries paid to FAB workers of 15.9 billion, investments from locators of 27.8 billion, and net exports of 42.98 billion pesos. The cost incurred in obtaining the aforementioned benefits amounted to only 13.58 billion. This consists of value-added tax, excise tax, and duty exemption of 10.3 billion, foregone income tax of 1.66 billion, value-added tax zero rated of 858 million, and budget allocation from the General Appropriations Act of 750 million pesos. Simply put, 
the fund generated 6 pesos and 45 centavos in direct benefits for every 1 peso incurred by the government, a substantial rate of return indicative of the enormous economic advantage which the FAB promises. In fact, the FAB has been instrumental in making the province of Bataan register the lowest poverty incidence in the country according to the 2015 Philippine Statistics Authority data. From a high 7% in 2012, it is now down to 1.6%. It is also instrumental in making Mariveles attain a 100% field health membership coverage. Don't we want this to happen in every province? Isn't lowering the poverty incidence the main objective of all national government agencies and local government units? With other economic variables which are not even considered in the data presented above, such as emergence and boom of other business activities in Mariveles and the whole province of Bataan, as shown by the exponential increase in local and national tax collections resulting from the operation of the Freeport, further strengthening the fact to make it more globally competitive cannot be overemphasized. House Bill number 6524 seeks to strengthen the powers and functions of the FAB to unlock its full potential as a preferred investment destination. Among others, the bill clarifies and clearly provides that except for the payment of 5% final tax on gross income earned, the FAB enterprises and the FAB itself are exempt from payment of all national and local taxes. The bill authorizes the FAB to expand with the concurrence of the affected local government units and approval of the AFAB board. This clarifies the intention to expand and cover the whole Bataan province to provide the FAB more options for locators, <coughs> economies of scale, and maximize the development of FAB to include other strategic areas in Bataan. It authorizes the AFAB to impose its own conditions. It shall not be limited to the conditions provided under Republic Act 7916 and Republic Act No. 8748, other related issuance, rule, or regulation in the administration, implementation, and monitoring of incentives. It gives AFAB the flexibility to determine domestic sales ratio of FAB enterprises without loss of eligibility to avail of the incentives to benefit our economy. For example, Petroca Manufacturing Philippines, a joint venture Petroca group of companies and Design Science Incorporated, produces PBCs and is allowed to sell 100% of its products to the Department of Public Works and Highways. The bill also grants AFAB the authority to grant income tax holiday and operate net operating loss carryover without limit of enjoyment except for the sequential availment with the 5% final tax on GIE and the 20-year duration of fiscal incentives subject to extension for industries indispensable to national development as determined by the AFAB. It authorizes AFAB to create the best model business center, one-stop shop for locators, by putting the enforcement of the building and fire codes, DENR and PPA functions, Bureau of Immigration Assistance for working visas, and issuance of all necessary permits, clearances, clearances, licenses, and other certifications under the FAB. This is also designed to improve the ease of doing business and lower bureaucratic burdens of investing in doing business with the FAB. And the bill allows AFAB to attract sunrise industries such as cloud computing services, business process outsourcing, regional headquarters, and offshore financial centers, among others. To sustain its momentum and allow the FAB to develop its full potential, there is no other way forward than to strengthen its powers and functions, 
retain the incentives it offers and provide it with the flexibility to make it even more competitive and attractive. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Thank you, Attorney uh, Liberato. Um, Mayor Concepcion, any, any opening uh, statement? Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, as um, what um, the, the consultant of our representative uh, earlier said, um, with, the, um, with the regards to the municipality of Marivales, actually um, the people of Wakbataan, um, with its um, direct foreign investors, have um, created thousands of jobs for our um, constituents. So um, needless to say, um, it gave um, our people um, the capacity um, to purchase um, their needs and also to to have um, the money for medical expenses, um, which um, uh, actually um, resulted um, in our um, social services uh, as the LG provided provides. Um, there is um, there is also um, a lot. Uh, there is a decrease of people who goes to the municipality to ask for assistance for medical expenses and the likes. Also, um, the municipality enjoys um, some financial um, shares from, uh, from, from the people there at Patan. And according to the statistics, um, from 20... Wait, uh, from... From the year 20... 11, which was um, actually the first um, year of um, the operation, the FIPA, if I'm not mistaken, um, Chairman Amy. Um, it, was, um, um, it was 2010, the first operation of the FIPA. Um, from 13, uh, actually 13 million from 2010, because um, we also enjoyed um, some um, benefits uh, from the PESA before. Um, but in 2011, when um, the FIPA uh, first came, it was um, down to uh, 4 million because um, our 2% share from the PESA was um, decreased to 1%. But um, really, um, the local government unit then, um, which was from the former administration, um, agreed to the decrease in the share because they saw the possibility or the um, potential of the FIPA area to bring in more jobs for our people, which is more important um, rather than the, the share that the LGU will get from the operation of um, the FIPA. But um, in 2017, it shows that um, our share from the FIPA area of the is already 15 million. So it's um, more than um, what we had from um, PESA. Also, um, the FIPA area of the since um, our our constituents already have uh, the purchasing capacity and some of them, uh, because of the influx of um, the workers, are engaged in their own businesses, therefore increasing our business tax collection from 2010, it, uh, it was um, 32 million and compare it to 2017, which is 130 million. So um, I believe the people here of Japan um, um, attributed to our dynamic economic growth of the municipality of Marivelles. And if these amendments, um, which was um, proposed by our um, representative from the second district, as well as um, the bill authored by Senator Gordon, will promote um, the, the coming of more investments in the freeport, then um, the municip municipality of Marivelles is um, very much um, welcome to these amendments. That's all, um, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. May I have uh, a few um, questions? Um, sabi niyo kanina, 70, in 2017, 15 million ang uh, kinita niyo or 15 million ang nakuha niyo sa FAB. Yes, Mr. Correct. And that's uh, coming from, a, in 2010, 13 million. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, maliit lang na increase from 2000. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, 2010, uh, we, we actually, um, the, the shares is actually 2%. This, this, the 2010 data is actually our share from um, PESA before. Then, on um, 2013, it was 4 million. This is um, already coming from the people there of Batan. There was a decrease because um, the, according to the organic pack of the people area, the share of the municipality is now only 1%. Mm. But um, in 
2017, it only increased by 2 million. Yes, yes, uh, so I think that's... Although what you're saying is uh, the percentage share decreased from 2% to 1%. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, of course, there's a trade-off no, from the decrease, and you're saying that uh, you gain employment from uh, from yeah. FAB. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Our um, constituents are employed in the Freeport area. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, for, uh, for everyone to know him, um, during my time when I was on the when I was a member of the Sangguniang Bayan of uh, Mariveles, that was in 2013 to 2016, um, we authored a law which um, actually um, enjoined the investors in our municipality, including those in the people area, to employ 70% um, of its total workforce to be composed of um, the people, people coming from Mariveles and um, the, the rest uh, uh, the rest workforce coming from um, other municipalities or even other provinces. Of course, with the uh, with, uh, exception that um, if the people of Mariveles or if um, the investors are looking for people with technical know-how and the uh, municipality cannot provide, then that's the only time when they can um, hire people from outside of the municipality. And um, as of um, if, if uh, my if my data is correct, um, the people area of Bataan um, is employing um, uh, almost 40,000. 40,000, uh, 38,000. Out, out of that 40,000, how many uh, is from Mariveles? 90% um, um, according to our... 90%. So 90% of that uh, 40,000 yes, uh, uh, are bona fide residents of uh, yes because um, um, there is a labor center um, from the fab wherein they have the data of all the workers mm -hmm. so and you also mentioned that uh, you also your business tax increased because yes, of the uh, activities yes because of uh, the economic activities because activities um, inside fab yes but also other than business tax do you collect real estate taxes? um from um the investors from the Freeport area are exempt from uh, from um, paying real estate taxes, as um, what was stated in the even in the original law that created the Freeport area. So the only thing that you get from uh, from FAB is that one percent. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, contribution. Yes. One percent of that five percent being paid. No. no five percent uh, GIE on eh, Of okay. which one percent goes to okay. to Maribeles. Okay. Wala na hong Business permit, wala na rin wala real estate na, taxes. Na, wala na. Okay. Right. Right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, engineer, uh, <coughs> you have the floor. Okay, um, Mr. Chair, uh, we would like to present uh, a brief, brief background or updates on the performance of the Freeport area of Bataan. Uh, we, we would like to go straight to the highlights, considering that uh, it has been... Uh, already uh, stated in the opening remarks that uh, we are coming from the former Bataan Economic Zone under the PESA. Now under our focused go uh, governance under the AFAB. Uh, when we took over in June 29, 2010, uh, we inherited uh, 33 uh, operating enterprises and uh, as we speak, uh, sorry, uh, so end of May this year, we already have 131 registered enterprises. And uh, 98, I think, is operational. With respect to uh, the investments that we generated, uh, uh, as of uh, also end of 2017, starting uh, from 9.8 billion, we now have uh, generated uh, close to 26 billion uh, investments or 162% uh, growth. Uh, for employment, uh, we came in in 2010 with only 12,777 workers. These are only the direct workers, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Uh, we do not even count yet the indirect employees. These are the ones employed directly by the 
uh, locator companies and the enterprises. So as of uh, end of May this year, uh, we have 37,778 workers inside the Freeport area of Bataan for a 196% growth. Uh, since we started our operations, as I mentioned, from the middle of 2010, uh, we have consistently been able to register additional locator enterprises, and we now have 131 as of end of May. And just uh, to give a, an overview on the uh, citizenship or nationality of the enterprises, uh, these are the data as of end of May 2018. We have Filipino, Korean, British, American, Chinese, and Japanese companies operating. And in terms of uh, the sectors, industry sectors, 16% uh, uh, the majority is into manufacturing of leather and complemented by 10% of other manufacturing industries. Uh, Bataan, which, was, uh, which started as the, the very first uh, free port uh, free trade zone of the country, uh, is well into manufacturing. And uh, we have now been uh, recognized by our uh, colleagues in the, uh, the other investment promotion agencies. We are informally a group, a group, a group as, and we call ourselves the PIPP, the Philippine Investment Promotion Plan. We have been uh, recognized as the high-end manufacturing hub of the country. Uh, and uh, we are trying to diversify into the business process outsourcing where we now have around 15% of the investments. Of course, these are supported by 11% uh, for uh, accommodation and food and service industry, 8% uh, for wholesale and retail trade, and 6% uh, uh, real estate. And uh, the rest are for transportation, transport equipment related. Uh, this will just show the annual committed investments that we were able to uh, generate. Uh, I would like to point out uh, that we had the transition in administration in 2016. In fact, I was appointed in October of 2016 uh, after the first chairman and administrator uh, uh, was uh, required to subscribe to the uh, executive order or administrative order uh, mandating all holdover uh, appointees to resign their, uh, their positions. So, uh, in fact, uh, the AFA board was officially reconstituted only in April of 2017. That is why we, it would appear that we had uh, low generation of investments in 2017. But uh, as of uh, this year, as of May, we have uh, committed investments of 41.7 million. And uh, after our engagement in the presidential visit to South Korea, we, we are already in receipt of uh, letters of intent, official letters of intent, uh, amounting to over uh, one point, uh, uh, 2.5 billion US dollars and uh, we are already uh, we already hosted the visit of the technical personnel of this company from Korea who are in of our, who have expressed their intention to invest in the Freeport area of Bataan and we are already formulating the details of the projects uh, this now shows the annual increase in employment Consistently, there has been an increase in the job generation, which is the, the main mandate of the AFAB, the Freeport Authority of Bataan. Uh, and uh, as mentioned, uh, these are mostly locals, but uh, we are proud to say that uh, we have workers coming from as far as Mindanao 
and uh, the Visayas. In fact, there was a time that we were uh, providing uh, employment to some displaced uh, uh, residents of Marawi City. The original proclaimed area under the PESA before is uh, over 1,600 hectares, but these are all mountainous and rolling areas. In fact, the developed areas total to uh, about 456 hectares, and uh, the occupied area right now is 355. And out of the 101 hectares remaining, uh, only three major parcels of plot are uh, soon to uh, receive uh, industrial related or, or industrial related investments and uh, these are not even contiguous. That is why uh, we are also looking at uh, potential expansion areas. So we would like to share, Your Honor, our uh, contribution. This is purely uh, for the authority, not even counting the, the shares of the locator companies and their employees and the indirect impact to the economy. Uh, but uh, I believe that was already highlighted in the opening remarks given by Attorney Amante Liberato. But uh, in terms of uh, net income, uh, we were able to turn around the uh, operations into the block uh, starting 2012. Uh, one and a half years after we inherited, uh, we took over the former Bataan Economic Zone. And uh, as of May this year, we have 99.13 million uh, uh, net income. In terms of our contribution to the national coffers, we have a total, we have the total contributions shown in the chart. Uh, as of May this year, we already contributed 173.72 million to the national coffers. These are broken down into the following three slides. First is on the dividends that we remit to the national government uh, as required by our uh, charter, we remit 50% of our net income. And uh, we project that uh, as of May, uh, can you go back please? We project that as of May, our dividend will be around 74 million. Next slide. In terms of income tax, this is the corporate income tax being paid by the authority. So uh, this year uh, we have remitted 82.31 million pesos. And finally, the withholding taxes of our employees from the AFAB. Oh, sorry, it's, I think it's the other way around. Or anyway, uh, this is in terms of tax remittance of the authority. And uh, so we project to, uh, as of May, we have remitted uh, 17.28 million. Uh, yeah, this will just, uh, just very briefly, this will be the last slide. We would like to present to the committee, Your Honor, our action plan, uh, what we intend to provide Moving forward, uh, we're coming from, uh, uh, it's, it has been said that uh, it is only with the eyes that one can see rightly, but this essential is invisible to the eyes. It is only with the heart. Uh, that's from the book, The Little Prince. And uh, it really takes, uh, it doesn't require any uh, intensive education for anybody to see what the Freeport requires right now, but it's uh, essentially the heart. Housing for workers, because uh, uh, of the jobs that we generate, uh, we anticipate that uh, 
uh, more workers coming from uh, far areas will be employed and uh, it would be very hard for them to be commuting every day so we need to provide housing and uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, there's uh, we're running out of uh, space so we need to expand and uh, capitalize on the interest being shown uh, on uh, by investors to the Freeport area of Bataan and uh, automatically we need to improve accessibility uh, that is why uh, it was mentioned and I support uh, the, the, the representation of our congressman that uh, uh, we need to somehow uh, even the playing field by providing uh, supplemental incentives to compensate for our peculiarity like uh, to be able to reach the Freeport area of Bataan you, you have to ply the zigzag road and uh, we have uh, developed through the years a, a bypass road but uh, there are still challenges in navigating that bypass road that's among others and uh, of course since we are host to uh, coal plants that provide the uh, reliable, adequate, and cheap power to our locators. We would want to keep our share in the preservation, conservation, and protection of the environment. That is why we are pushing for renewables. And uh, we have already awarded uh, a bilateral contract for, uh, mini uh, for power coming from mini hydro resources. And uh, we are bidding out uh, the, the setting up of uh, solar panels on the rooftops of our standard factory buildings. Of course, lastly, better transport, transportation system to uh, service the, the workers and even the, the technical people and investors that, are, that uh, choose to stay uh, and go home every day to their respective homes. And of course, uh, the, audit, the auditors and the other clients of our locator companies that would want to visit the Freeport area of Bataan, we would envision a better transportation system. So this all, uh, our desire is to make them soft. Soft heart meaning all these projects should be socially relevant, operationally viable, financially feasible, and technologically advanced. And. Uh, we, the Freeport area of Bataan, Your Honor, has undoubtedly grown significantly from the time of its conversion in 2009 from the former Bataan Economic Zone. And as, as mentioned, uh, we have uh, experienced and displayed uh, our capability to, as, uh, as is documented by our performance presented earlier. Uh, the APA believes in the vision and objectives of the author in coming up with the proposed legislation as this would further foster and enhance AFAB's full potential that will help attract more investors, create more jobs, and contribute more to the country's economic growth. Uh, I believe that we are uh, fully uh, supportive of the President's pronouncement to uh, bring the create job opportunities and uh, uh, bring economic progress to the countryside thereby decongesting the metropolis and uh, as mentioned earlier this can be done uh, by uh, providing compensatory uh, incentives that would uh, uh, somehow uh, make make uh, the APA and other less favorably situated economic zones and reports uh, competitive and uh, as attractive as the ones that are better situated. And uh, we believe that uh, uh, we have a working model that we need to sustain. We don't want to repeat what happened in the middle of 1980s where Bataan during its heyday was host to more than 50,000, almost 80,000 workers and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it became, uh, there had been, it experienced problems and uh, experienced the exodus of uh, its uh, locator companies and thereby creating uh, job displacements. We wouldn't want that to happen, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. 
that is why uh, we are supporting this uh, uh, bill in order to sustain the progress that we have achieved. And as again mentioned, uh, we have a working model. Uh, we solicit the support of uh, all the agencies concerned. And uh, we believe we can work together to, uh, to even duplicate this in other areas. And uh, that's all, Your Honor, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Engineer. Uh, actually, I have a lot of uh, questions no, regarding uh, the bill itself and also regarding the um, operations of AFAB. Um, although we have a lot of uh, resource persons for this afternoon, so we'll uh, go step by step. No? We're, 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 we want to start with uh, AFAB and then uh, we also invited some locators uh, who, who are um, enjoying the um, benefits and the incentives being given um, by AFAB. And we want to hear their experiences so that we will complete the picture uh, regarding the bill. Um, we invited Universal Weaver, Mr. Uh, Jiang Liang Dammu. Uh, sir, any uh, statements, anything you want to share? Um, regarding um, AFAB and uh, how it helped your business and how um, your experiences actually uh, with AFAB and in Bataan. This one. Okay. Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. <coughs> uh, I'm from Metex, uh, Universal River Corporation. Uh, locator of uh, FAB. <coughs> so as a locator, uh, we feel we can see the uh, FAB have a big uh, improvement and the progress in the past few years. But now, as a locator, we encounter some problem I want to raise here. First is uh, the FAB, the <coughs> location is uh, a little promote area compared to uh, other economic zone because this end of the road. So we now we talk the if we're hiding the workers now it's uh, sometimes it's uh, not so easy the workers. Not easy to hide in because uh, <coughs> so <coughs> I suggested to uh, improve the <coughs> housing uh, make more dormitory to uh, list to the workers. So the other province workers can come here to uh, apply the job. This first. The second issue is <coughs> uh, in the past few years, we can see a fact already do uh, their best to improve many facilities. But I think we still need to continues to do. For example, the port are all continuing now all from Manila to here. It's long distance. So uh, I heard the FAB already starting to have plan to build a new port for transfer the container to here. Mm, but I don't know the status now. <coughs> uh, also other facilities like a road, because the people we feel the population in the, in the Malibiris uh, increase too much already because of the many new locators coming. They hiding more workers and the, some family move to here. But the facilities like traffic in the town is very traffic now. <coughs> and all the world or the town we need to, I think, I suggest to, to continue to uh, improve the facilities. Uh, this, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dan. How many? What do you produce? What What does uh, Universal Weaver produce? Uh, we we are here starting from 1991. Okay. Uh, our main products is uh, textile. 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 Uh, yeah, hospital. But linear, uniform, textile products. And how many uh, percent do you export? Export almost 70 percent. Almost 70 percent. Yeah. And uh, how many employees? Employees do you have? No, 700 plus. 700 employees. Yeah, 700 plus. Yeah. 
Are you happy with the incentives? Excuse me? Are you happy with the incentives being given? Yes, yes. Yeah. You're, you're happy already? Yes. No more addition? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, everything is okay? Yeah, okay. okay. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, another locator is um, Petru, Petru, Petrucha <coughs> Manufacturing. Yeah. Sir, Mr. Robert uh, Ten Chavez. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Senator. Um, we've been uh, a locator for the past two years, and uh, we've, uh, we were able to export already to most of the ASEAN countries, such as uh, Singapore, uh, and recently, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Indonesia. We manufacture um, plastic sheet piles. And um, because of uh, AFAB, we were able to bring in the technology from Poland. Um, and we were able to serve uh, DPWH in terms of uh, flood control, um, what do you call it, flood control uh, materials. Do you, do you produce plastic sheets? Yes, 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 sir. PVC, PVC, sheets. PVC sheet piles. Ah, sheet piles. Yes, okay. yes, yes. And, um, bakit pinili nyo ang bataan among many of the uh, export processing zones? Well, uh, to be honest, um, we have the cheapest, uh, <laughs> we have the cheapest um, rate in terms of um, uh, lease and uh, electricity. Because we um, we produce uh, so much heat that we need uh, low rates for electricity. Indeed, dahil sa incentives. Well, most of the incentives are are similar or the same. So the the motivation really is uh, least rate and the and electricity cost. Um, for us, yes, sir. How about wages? Um, we don't yes. More How many employees, employees do you... Well, have? since we're automated, we only employ around... Um, mm -hmm. Fully automated, we're, we only employ around 20, 30. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, do you export? Yes, sir. How many percent of your output... As of now, it's 100% um, export but uh, yeah. some of them are being um, we, in, we export them to Singapore and then they deliver it here in the Philippines drop of export are you happy man, with the uh, AFAB or oh, yes, yes. do you plan to expand yes we're actually putting up another line uh, hopefully by end of the year all right. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Ten Chavez. Thank you. Uh, we also want to hear um, we have another locator, um, Mr. Patrick. Uh, Martinet, Essilor, Essilor Manufacturing, hindi ito ba siya? Wala yata eh. Okay, wala po. So I think we're done with all the locators. Uh, we'll go naman to the uh, government agencies. I think uh, ito po yung masaya eh. No? Uh, we'll start with, um, start with NEDA. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. So we have a letter to the Chair on our comments, but uh, allow me please to enumerate a few. The initiative to strengthen FAB is laudable since this will attract investments and generate jobs comparable with Clark and Subic. So as of the moment as presented, 
employment or job generation in uh, FAB is about 37,000 or 38,000, VOV 108,000 in Clark. So FAB is, has about 35% of the employment provided by uh, Clark. So the aggregate employment generated by these free ports is roughly 250,000. So significant po yung contribution ng FAB considering na uh, kakasimula lang niya uli noong 2010. Ano po sa Clark? Can you... 107,997 uh, 2017 data. And then FAB is... Uh, 37,975 2017. Okay. Uh, said that, uh, here under uh, some of our specific comments, uh, there is a need to emphasize that AFAB will have the authority to implement infrastructures such as transportation, power, water supply and sanitation uh, inside and outside of the Freeport Authority of Bataan to ensure connectivity and integration to other economic zones surrounding hinterlands and other support infrastructure facilities. Uh, for the information of the body, uh, minsan po kasi yung mga free ports or eco zones within Region 3, they are only ma mandated by their uh, organic acts to build the infrastructure facilities within the free port authority. They, they are not allowed to implement those to integrate their free ports or eco zones with uh, the other uh, facilities within the region or to connect their infra facilities to the other uh, infrastructure projects which are being built by the gov government. Uh, so we reiterate that if it's not yet provided in the draft bill, uh, it's worth considering to uh, enhance further or strengthen further uh, the Freeport uh, Authority of Bataan. Are you, are you objecting or are you amendable to for AFAB to build infrastructure outside of Supporting. I mean, we are supporting. Yes, yes, yes. So outside of their uh, of their zone, uh, they are supporting that they yes. can build outside. Yes. In the case that's, for example, uh, Mr. Chair, yes, Tex was built by BCDA to interconnect Subic and Clark and Visita Industrial Park to integrate those uh, uh, huge free, major free ports in the country. So there's no complementation. So in the case of FAB, they could also uh, implement a similar project to in integrate FAB, let's say for uh, with Subic, or to integrate FAB through the uh, Roman Highway to the SFX. Another thing, Mr. Chair, is that on uh, local business passing and licensing. So. We may, if we may suggest that business passing and licensing uh, fees shall accrue to the host municipality pursuant to the local government code of 1991. Since as mentioned earlier by the mayor of Mariveles, uh, we are only getting 1% uh, of the 5% GIR. So in the case, for example, right now of Angeles City, or even the city of Mabalakat in Clark, uh, they are collecting uh, BPLS fees uh, from the locators, for example, locators of SM Clark. To, of course, uh, this will further cascade the benefits to the uh, host LGUs and in part uh, address the perceptions that uh, eco zones are or have the tendency to become uh, enclaves, among others. I think the rationale for that is that one-stop shop concept. The reason why it's integrated in that 5% uh, GIE is because para isa lang kausap nila. Or else the locators will also have to go to the local government. I think the, the, the principle there, or the spirit there, is really to have that one-stop shop. Para kukolektayin nilang ni AFA, bigay ko nalang kung kanino ibibigay. That's yes. the concept there, no? 
if uh, if it's incorporated in the one stop or BOSS system, uh, that's okay, Mister. Provided still, uh, they may, of course, uh, uh, the BPLS proceeds uh, may again accrue to the whole LGOs in the case of Angeles City or Mabalakat in Freeport or Clark Freeport Zone. Uh, that's all, uh, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We'll, we'll uh, listen to uh, Peza. I think Peza also has a lot of th things to share, no? especially yung business permit because I know it's integrated na in the other Peza zones. No? But uh, any any comments? <coughs> Sir, thank you for inviting Peza. On behalf of our Director General, Brigadier General, Sarita Ching Plaza, again, so first, uh, since the performance was discussed a while ago, we, uh, on the upper PESA, we would like to give a quick briefer. PESA was enacted on the year 1995, and on that year, uh, the employment created by the authority is only at 121,000 in direct employees. But as of today, we have produced 1.4 million direct employment and that does not include the uh, indirect in employment that it necessarily creates. The Locator investments by product sector is the distribution is 36% on semiconductors, and the second ha second biggest contributor would be the other manufacturers, and then fi followed by the information technology services. As to income and dividends remitted by PESA, in 2015, as confirmed by the Department of Finance through our TINTA submission, we have delivered 1.067 billion to the government. Uh, Your Honor, we would like to make two points. First point is that uh, on the APOPESA, our stance is that we believe that there is no longer need for legislation because the current proposed expansion of APA territory and jurisdiction can already be performed under the mandates and charters, charter of PESA. Second, Your Honor, as to the proposed additional incentives by the bill, we suggest that it is further studied because, number one, uh, we believe that uh, law expanding or creating an investment, investment promotion agency is different from a law which provides the incentives the latter administers. As Currently provided in the bill, the current AFA administers the same incentives under Republic Act 7916 or the PESA law. But further study would reveal that RA 7916 only refers to the incentives already provided under EO 226. So if they are proposing that, uh, for an instance, domestic sales and its threshold should be reduced or removed, that would effectively violate EO 226 in which their incentives also relies. That's it, Your Honor. So, Attorney, are you 
are you supporting this bill or you're not supporting this bill? As to the expansion That's of the official the uh, position of PESA. Yes, sir. And the official position? For the moment, sir, the, that's it. The ano pong official position ng PESA sa bill? As to the bill, sir, we oppose the, its passage because the goals that it wants to accomplish is, can already be accomplished through PESA. It would just be another duplication of PESA, sir. Um, one of the opening statements of, uh, I believe, si Attorney Liberato, is um, decentralization, no? and uh, I think there is merit to look at decentralization because decentralization also gives you or gives the uh, new entity focus on its uh, mandate, no? as opposed to a national mandate wherein you know, we're taking it to care of so many things. No? But I think in this case, they want to, you know, the, the one of the goals is really to focus on. Uh, a specific area and uh, make sure that the specific area becomes successful. No? I think that's one of the opening statements earlier. So, uh, ano po ang nakikita niyong, uh, what do you see, uh, what complications do you see in terms of forming a focused, decentralized IPA for Bataan? Sir, again, it would only duplicate the the mandates of PESA and it will necessarily incur costs on, on the government. So we suggest that instead of expanding the jurisdiction of APAB, the national and local efforts to promote investment should, should be, should be, in, I'm sorry sir, that instead we use PESA as a national and local initiative to promote investment. Can you cite one instance where duplication can happen? Under our charter, so Section 6, there are three modes of developing an area into an eco zone. First mode is through private initiative, second mode is through local government initiative, and third mode is through the uh, national national in initiative. If we study further, sir, uh, and we pe through PESA we can already claim any area of the country which is outside the territory of existing IPs into uh, economic zones development. So if we will expand the jurisdiction of APAV to new territories in which PESA can already proclaim, that would be the case of the duplication, Your Honor. How many PESA zones are you administering? As of February 2018, Your Honor, we have 4,100 PESA locator companies. 4,000 uh, for, falls under the administration of PESA? Yes, Your Honor. How, how, itong 4,000 saan ang location? How many provinces are these uh, located in? We are located in 103 cities and municipalities, Your Honor. 103 cities and municipalities. Muna municipalities. And when you say administratively under PESA, ano yung mga key activities ng administration na yun? First, sir, the review of any application for registration and second, if the company wants to continue their operation and enjoy the incentives, they must abide with our administrative rules and guidelines. How about promotion? As to promotion, we also have that, Your Honor. So you're promoting 4,000 PESA zones? Yes, Your Honor. Ilan, ang ilan taong nagpo-promote? I don't have the actual figure, sir, but we have an 
uh, specific department for that. It is called Public PPRG, Public Relations Group. But ilan sila? Is it 4,000 also? No, Your Honor. Definitely not. Mga ilan? 100? Less, Your Honor. Less than 100. Less, and I think that is the point of uh, AFAB, no? Because sa kanila ngayon, how many, ilang po nagpapromote sa inyo? Uh, how many, how many uh, people is doing the promotion for AFAB? We also have a dedicated department and they are around the... Uh, More or less, ilan lang? Seven. Seven, 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 seven people. And that's uh, the point I think I'm trying to make, no? You have uh, less than a hundred I don't know kung ilan po, no? but less than 100 in your promotion agency, promoting 4,000 um, peso zones as opposed to seven, promoting one. No? So the focus and the uh, dedication is really quite compelling because isa lang yung pinapromote nila. So that's, that's one, of the, one of the things I gathered from the opening statement ni Attorney Liberato, no? the decentralization uh, argument for uh, AFAB. So I would like to correct myself. We have 385 operating economic zones nationwide. And what I, I mean, 4,000. I mean that w is the actual locator companies. Oh, that's a locator company. In zones, ilan zones? 385, Your Honor. 385. Nevertheless, it's this, it's the same. No, I, I doubt it. If you have fifty uh, promoting uh, or promotion individuals in your group, I, I doubt it. Kumerong ganon. But I'm, what my point here is the uh, what they're 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 trying to argue is nakafocus sila on one on one zones. So I think that is one of the one of the uh, uh, arguments for. This uh, this bill, no. Sure. Engineer, can I, can I make? Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, we recognize the the importance and the role of the PESA in uh, trailblazing the privatization of the establishment and the operation of economic zones. In fact, I was a former uh, PESA zone manager, and uh, and uh, they have established the reputation of being uh, above board and very transparent and uh, very professional. And uh, the only reason is uh, since they have, as you mentioned, more than 300 economic zones to cater to, uh, what's happening is when a locator is looking for a potential site and they go to the PESA, what they provide is a list of echo zones uh, as we have experienced in the past, Bataan being the premier free trade zone, the very first economic zone, uh, if you will not really highlight the inherent advantages of locating in Bataan as against 300 plus zones, it will be very hard for potential investors to consider, even consider Bataan because it's, as mentioned, it's at the end of the road. Uh, we don't have a port we don't have uh, a seaport nor an airport. So uh, it would take really a focus group to be able to, to uh, effectively promote the, the area. And this is precisely what happened. That is why uh, there was a continuous decline of investments in Bataan, starting from the middle of the 1980s. And uh, it was the decision of the local officials to uh, sponsor the, the bill that created the AFAB law because they saw the need for a focus group to, to promote the Bataan economic suit. And uh, when it was taken away from the PESA, uh, uh, initially there were very uh, serious uh, uh, efforts to, uh, to uh, oppose the move, but uh, eventually uh, it passed into a law and uh, the Batan Economic Zone became a free port. And we 
we saw the the practical effect of having a focus group as uh, the figures would uh, show us how, how it was how it became very progressive after having a dedicated uh, governance uh, group that uh, oversees its operation and promotion so uh, plus uh, given the fact that uh, uh, we being on the ground uh, we know the peculiarities, the constraints, and, uh, and what we need to do. And uh, we are always in close coordination with the local officials, like the mayor and the governor. And that's why we coined the term one bataan. So we are always uh, in sync in what we do. So I think that would be very hard to achieve if there will be a national agency that, over, that will, again, replace the, the APAB or uh, oversee the operations of potential sites in Bataan. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Engineer. Uh, Attorney Brillantes, may, mayroon akong nakitang uh, uh, some complications in the bill, no? because one of the uh, proposals is to expand AFAB to the entire province of Bataan. Mayroon ba kayong economic zones in Bataan? Yes, Your Honor. Peza, Peza administered economic zone? Uh, specifically in Marivelas, Your Honor. We also in Marivelas, but in the province of Bataan. Yes, Your Honor. Ilan ang, ilan ang economic zones natin? I will get back to you, Your Honor, regarding... Pero meron. Yes, sir. Is it yes, 10, 5? Uh, ano bang? As of the moment, sir, I can only give you the figure on Marivelas. Marivelas. But on the rest of Bataan, Your Honor, we will get back I to Ilan sa Marivelas? We have one locator one. as of now. And in, in, the, in the bill, no, uh, it calls for the expansion. So m my understanding is AFAB will now be, um, will have the breadth and the scope of PESA in Bataan, thereby giving the existing locators a choice no, whether to uh, go to AFAB or to PESA. Any comment regarding, regarding that, considering that You've seen the incentives being given, you know, they have a, a wide array of incentives being given. So, anong comment niyo dun sa ganun na proposal, no, giving the locators that will be uh, part of the new, uh, new area of AFAB, a choice to move from PESA to AFAB? Sir, so first the incentives that AFAB, the expanded powers of AFAB would grant. Uh, closer scrutiny of the bill reveals that first, that the first tier of AFAB's incentives is under Republic Act 7916, which in turn effectively adopts the incentives under EO 226. And the second tier of AFAB's expanded incentives are those, quote unquote, not limited to Republic Act 7916. So it's a bit open ended, Your Honor, as to uh, whether those incentives would be valid. Because, as I mentioned a while ago, we are in the impression that a uh, bill creating or redefining an IPA is different from a bill that modifies or expands incentives like under those EO226. Uh, second, Your Honor, to address your question, whether what, what is our comment in the locators having the choice to relocate to, to AFAB or release from PESA, then relocate to them? Again, Your Honor, we think that there would be duplication of PESA or the functions of PESA in that matter will be the effect uh, if, if ever this bill will be uh, approved? What will be the effect to the existing PESA zones? And then what will be the effect to the locators? Kung ako'y locator, no, ano mangyayari sa akin? Because what you don't want to happen is uh, uncertainty to the locators. You know, the locators now in PESA is already doing business. They're already running smoothly. And then here comes a new, a new uh, tax regime. Whether good, whether bad, we don't know. But administrating, administering that is also another problem. No? How do you transfer and take note of the incentives being given already? So how do you, what do you foresee that will happen? 
in that instance, Your Honor, the locator still has the choice whether he sees that he's still he is still happy with PESA, he would remain with us. But if he the locators or the zone, the locators, Your Honor, locator. So in locator. Yes, sir. So in locators, para meron siyang uh, ano bang tawag dyan? Op in. May op in siya to uh, op out sa inyo, op in sa kanila. Yes, sir. Parang ganun. But yes. uh, administratively, will that be feasible? Uh, administratively, Your Honor, it, was, it would be just a case of them delisting from us if they want to transfer to AFAB. So you don't see any problem? Uh, administratively, Your Honor, I currently... I Except your see. revenues will reduce. Of course. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, AFAB, in this proposal, this is a super IPA. Tawag ko dito, super IPA. Yes, the powers of PESA, the powers of BOI, and powers of a lot more you know, uh, in the, in the uh, proposal. So I can foresee that uh, you know, it can be very attractive for the locators to migrate to AFAB, to the AFAB regi regime. But I'm just trying to understand any administrative uh, process in doing so. And As will that be uh, feasible or not feasible? As for our processor owner, uh, again, it would be just a simple case of them delisting from us, then registering with AFAB as to revenue and, of course, the figures that it would result in our performance. The, it will effectively erode the mandates of PESA in that area. Okay. Sige. All right. Engineer? Uh, just like to formally uh, represent that uh, taking over existing PESA zones for other or, or, or zones other, under other IPAs is not under the agenda of the, the AFAB. In fact, we're looking prospectively. As we have been doing in Mariveles, within the proclaimed area of the former Botanic Economic Zone, there are companies that are enjoying BOI incentives and they are paying and getting permits from the local government. So they remain as is. So what we are just trying to do is to, to be able to uh, optimize the attractability so that potential investors would consider Bataan. Uh, it is our goal together with our governor that uh, we share the success of Maribeles with the other municipalities of Bataan. This is, uh, again, in line with the thrust of the president to decentralize and uh, decongest Metro Manila and uh, bring about economic progress in the countryside, which cannot be attained if there will be uh, a centralized system and uniform incentives. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Engineer. Um, thank you, uh, Attorney. Uh, next will be GCG, Attorney Condes. Any comments from? Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we just have a few points to make from the GCG. First, um, we'd like to emphasize that while technically, by definition, the AFAB is a GOCC, under the Republic Act 10149 or the Charter for um, uh, Governance for GOCCs, uh, it is actually exempted from the coverage of the GCG in terms of monitoring and oversight. That means that we do not monitor their um, performance and we do not monitor their um, governance actions. That being said though, um, as a GOCC and noting the fact that um, this uh, bill focuses on improvement of all the operations of AFAB, including its um, corporate governance, we'd like to point out um, several things. Uh, first, um, the GCG is uh, privy to the uh, creation or the institutionalization of a national competition policy. Um, uh, it's part of the national strategic policy of the state and um, to kind of level out the playing field uh, economically and financially. Uh, that being said, um, we would recommend highly that the committee also seek the, um, the comments of the national, com the national Competition Commission in, uh, when it comes to the incentives that are going to be provided or expanded uh, powers of the AFAB. 
for the GCG, uh, we do note that um, this, uh, this bill seeks to um, exempt AFAB from all national and local taxes. Uh, this is uh, this is somewhat of a an anti-competition measure, uh, but um, we also emphasize that since we advocate for GOCCs, um, for the FAB itself, for the AFAB itself, uh, the GCG emphasizes that we support uh, this notion of competitive neutrality, wherein um, we, if there is uh, what we call um, a just, uh, if it is justified by um, greater public interest, then um, government agencies or the Senate or the Congress can, of course, uh, take note of these um, justifiable circumstances to grant this certain competitive advantages to um, GOCCs like the AFAB. And since we are already here <laughs> um, trying to improve the, the, or strengthen the, the, uh, the operations and the governance of AFAB, we'd also like to take the opportunity, Mr. Chair, to point out that under the current, um, under the current charter of, uh, uh, of the FAB, um, the, in terms of the board comp composition, uh, the chairman and the CEO is technically still put there as the, should be the same person. But uh, as we all know, under, um, well, best practices for good governance in corporations, uh, we recommend that the chairmanship and the CEO position are actually separated. The GCG still exercises its power or the state's ownership power over the AFAB or the FAB uh, through the nomination of one third of its appointed directors. So that's it, Mr. Chair. Bakit hindi under uh, um, AFAB sa GCG? Sir, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, by our charter under Section 4 of RA 10149, um, all economic zone authorities are actually exempted. Ah, okay. Yes, sir. So lahat exempt? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. uh, including research Clark institutions and SOCs. Yes, sir. But uh, insofar as nomination of uh, its appointed directors, we still give a short list to the office of the president to the one, at least for one third of the, para may exercise of ownership. Para so in, in this case, you nominate the people who will sit in the board? Uh, I yes, sir. Correct? One third po one for third. economic zone authorities. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, do you actually... Um, does GCG participate through those nominees in the governance structure of, in this case, AFAB? Uh, sir, our uh, oversight function stops there uh, in, in, with the submission to the Office of the President of the short list. So, ganun lang. After yes, nomination, sir. wala na. Yes, sir. So, how do you know kung your nominees are uh, performing their duties? Um, well, sir, uh, at the end of the year, they do have to accomplish uh, some sort of a performance scorecard for, for directors. And um, if they are deemed to have rated 90% sa performance nila or something like that. Who, who, who rates them? Uh, well, each other and themselves, sir. It's a, parang, it's a collegial na rating and also they self-rate. So those ones you nominate, nag-nominate kayo dito sa AFAB? Yes, sir. Uh, I, we belie I believe we've already sent our list to the Office of the President previously. Nila nang nakaupo ba sila? Sir, I will have to verify. But um, So I think AFAB has six appointive positions. Nine, nine, I'm sorry. Nine appointive positions. So of the three, yung tatlo po doon ang parang lalagyan namin ng pangalan. So, ano yung nag-nominate itong pangalan, ina-appoint ng presidente? Si president po ang pipili. So, ang rule po sa amin sa GCG is kung tatlo po yung i-fill namin na position, dapat anin po yung ibigay okay. namin kay presidente. And na then, pangalan. those three, assuming nakaupo sila, they rate each other among the three? Um, the board, sir. I, uh, it's supposed to be the whole board, sir. Eh. So, the whole board? Rates each other, yes, sir. And okay. then they rate themselves. Yes, sir. And then they submit to you. Yes, sir. Who submits Actually, to the board or the person? Uh, the, the board, them? sir. We request from the board. And then in this case, na, 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 na ano niyo, di ba? Sir, hindi ko po. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Nakita niyo rating? I, I Asado ba? Bagsak? Anong, anong rating? Sir, uh, we will provide the chairman if we already have can the you, rating. Can you look into that as GCG? Kasi that's your 
ultimate uh, link to uh, AFAB. Eh. And um, I'm just uh, concerned about the accountability. Uh, in this case, the accountability of AFAB is to the board. No? Correct? Uh, the, the president will only step in kung, kung merong for cause or kung merong nag-file ng complaint. But ultimately, the governance lies within the board. But then again, yeah, there's a, I think there's a reason why those, bakit may link pa rin with GCG is really to monitor and to uh, exert some form of um, governance yes, principles sir. over AFAB. Uh, for the information of the committee, Mr. Chair, uh, if, for example, a member of the board does not make grade, they are not recommended to be reappointed the following year. Kailan na appoint yung nominees ninyo? We will provide you with the okay. with the with the data, Your Honor. And can you also provide us the grades of those? I'm just curious, lang, kasi nga may mechanism to appoint, pero hindi naman natin e exercise yung mechanism. Okay. Di sayang lang. Uh, Bakit pa tayong naglagay ng ng nominees kung you will not exercise? But it's in your charter that they will be graded. And you will review those grades, those yes, performance sir. There's indicators. Yes, performance, there's a performance evaluation for directors. And AFAB is in that list of performance uh, monitoring. For, the, for those who were actually nominated by us. Correct, the, the three names. Yes, no? sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Please submit to us the results of those we will performance. Do so. I want to be um, enlightened on how GCG... Uh, uh, operationalize that link to um, AFAB. No. We will do so, Mr. Chair. Thank you. But do you, uh, what's your comment on the bill? Do you support it, the GCG, or <laughs> you're, you're indifferent, or? Sir, uh, it's no, sir. Uh, as as we've mentioned, sir, um, if the committee or if the Congress finds that there is actually uh, justification for like greater public interest to give this at least the incentive of no taxes to be paid by the GOCC, in this case, uh, the FAB, uh, then for us that, that complies with our competitive neutrality policy. Bang GOCC na may ganitong privilege? Meron po, sir. Meron pong ibang mga GOCCs na they are, um, you know, in view of certain taxes, in, cert in certain fees or, um, yes po, uh, in certain fees, uh, hindi po sila nagbabayad, for example, to the national government. Yeah, yeah, yung ganitong exacto, exactong, Ay, yung uh... Yung completely po walang binabayaran to the national government, uh, sir. Itong, uh, um, saan ba yun? Sir, we only note, sir, um, uh, under... Exempt, exempt uh, from payment of all national and local taxes. Mm. Meron bang ganyan na GOCC? Only, sir, um, f from my recollection, sir, only cultural and educational institutions. Ang, do you, do, can can you be more specific? Which I will, ones or I will those have GOCCs review, are exempted? Yung ganito, exactong ganito. We will, we will review, sir, and we'll submit a list to you if there is, if there is like, some... Pero you're not sure kung meron o wala completely wala pang binabayaran parang yung ganitong ganitong ganito exempted from national and local taxes um ang meron lang po ngayon sir na masasabi ko is uh, yung in lieu po of all uh, national and local taxes if I'm not mistaken is PAGCOR they okay. have the yeah but in lieu yun ito kasi lahat wala eh yun sir wala po akong sa pagkakaalala ko po wala pong exact kong ganito we will review, sir, and we can submit to the committee. So, yeah. Can you submit to us? Because this is actually uh, quite unique, no? I'm, I'm afraid. If we start doing this, the other GOCCs will clamor for the same privilege. Yes, sir. Okay. We will review, sir, and we'll submit to the committee as soon as possible. Right. right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, next will be, uh, ito, ano, exciting to, DOF. Saan DOF? Ma'am Juvie. Alam ko na yung sasagot niyo, but put it on record. Thank you, sir, for that uh, exciting remark. <laughs> but anyway, uh, good afternoon, um, uh, guests and chair. Um, we'd like to thank you, first of all, for inviting the DOF. And even though you know what we're going to say already, for giving us the opportunity to put into record 
the comments and the position of the Department of Finance. Um, but I'm take, my take-off point, Mr. Chair, is the fact that you already mentioned at the very beginning that um, we would like to, uh, when we consider this bill, um, we also would like to consider this in view or in reference to the tax reform that is ongoing right now, that the administration is pushing for. Um, in particular, and in connection with this bill, is the modernization of the fiscal incentive system of the entire country. So with that, Mr. Chair, um, in general, we would just like to put into record as well that we are not opposing any tax incentives. Uh, we are not opposed of ta the, give the, the granting of tax incentives because other Asian ASEAN countries are also doing it. In fact, I think all of the countries in the world are doing it. Um, we are also not opposed to the establishment of economic zones, and that's primarily the reason perhaps why the Philippines is one of the very first which established economic zone in the, in the region, within the region. Um, we acknowledge the fact that it is really a driver for growth, economic growth, but there is a caveat to that. In fact, um, the establishment of economic zone is not a guarantee in itself. As we can see, based on our experience, that there are several economic zones in the country that have not been producing the kind of results that perhaps AFA has, has uh, had. Um, if I may, Mr. Chair, we have submitted a signed position paper by the Secretary of Finance to Congress. This is the um, our position on the substi uh, substitute bill to the House bill. Um, but some of the provisions are also contained in the Senate bill. And if I may be allowed by the Chair to uh, put forth this position. Um, we oppose, of course, the proposed tax exemptions or tax incentives, but specifically on for the following reasons. Um, on the tax exemption of AFAB, we know that the provision is kind uh, of uh, broadly worded. Um, as uh, reiterated earlier, it is exempting AFAB from all national and local taxes. And we think that will give rise, this will give rise to policy issues because there are also similarly situated GUCCs that are also doing the same functions that are not, um, that do not have that kind of tax exemptions or privileges. In fact, under the tax code, section 27 of the tax code specifically limits the tax exemption of certain GUCCs um, in order to make the income tax more revenue productive. So, hindi po lahat ng GOCC na bibigyan. Uh, again, sinasabi nga po ng GCG kanina, kanina uh, if there is really a, a, very, um, a very important reason uh, that is not anti-competitive, that will justify really the grant of a complete tax exemption, but, uh, for the, but in this case, we do not believe that it is so. Again, because other IPAs are also doing the same functions as uh, FAB is doing, and they are not entitled to the same tax exemption. In fact, I think PESA is, is uh, paying its due taxes. There is no tax exemption for PESA. So if we give them the grant, the, if we grant them the tax exemption, we will be putting them in an, an equal position in terms of benefits and privileges, but more importantly, we see this as being a precedent um, with respect to the tax treatment of other government entities. So what would prevent other IPEs from um, clamoring for the same tax treatment as well? Um, on the tax and duty exemption importations, however, we recommend that instead of an outright tax exemption, that AFA the avail of the tax subsidy so what, um, being implemented by the FIRB, um, this is contained in the annual GAA, and this is more transparent. There is no outright uh, cash, uh, cash um, payment on the part of the authority, but at the same time, we will know how much are these uh, tax and duty privileges when it comes to importation because it's being recorded and it's being placed in, a gen uh, in the GAA, so it's more transparent. <coughs> Now, on the proposal to increase the threshold on local, uh, tax on local sales, sorry, um, the proposal to increase the threshold for local sales from 30% to 70% up to maximum of 100% without losing the eligibility for the tax incentives contravene the exact objective why we create economic zones. Um, it's, it's like economic zones are conclaves for industries, Mr. Chair, unlike 
other uh, locations where all the entities are not given the same exact tax exemption or privileges, it is there preferably because, primarily because we want to spur and diversify exports. And this is because we also want to increase our foreign direct investment, which unfortunately, when we look at the data, is not really going that strong, especially when we had up our presentation and when we compared it with other ASEAN countries. The Philippines is the lowest FDI in the region. Um, tax incentives for exports are critical because we want them to be competitive with other markets and they are competing with international markets, not on the local okay. level. Um, with the proposal, the Freeport Air of Bataan will effectively be treated as an economic, domestic economic zone with tax incentives. Uh, when you talk about leveling the playing field, that is actually uh, contradicts the leveling of the playing field because now you're also producing and um, selling to the domestic market and you are allowing it or we are allowing it um, on the benefit of, of uh, them not paying the locators, not paying the, tax, the taxes and uh, duties. So they are competing for the same market, however, one sector is given an additional tax incentives. Okay. Apart from that, when it comes to tax administration, it's also quite difficult because um, it's, it's really hard when you do audit and you see that there are sales that are for local market and sales for international market. Whereas one is, again, selling just to the domestic market, which, is, uh, which has taxes and duties. No? Uh, whereas the other is also selling to the local market, but without tax exemptions and privileges. Okay? And I don't know how uh, the other IPAs would do it, but um, normally what you would do to avoid transfer pricing is you would have a separate entity inside the zone. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not also um, quite a standard practice in our case because when we look at the TIMTA data, there are certain ent entities that you can find inside the zone and also outside the zone. So what happens is that, again, you would have a mixed sales. And when you look at the when you look at the financial statements, you would not know already whether that is being sold to the international market or for export or for the local market. And once again, given incentives, the other is not. Um, that's it for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, have you, have you um, uh, studied uh, the impact of this proposal in terms of uh, revenue loss? Um, based on the TIMTA data, we would have the cost, Mr. Chair, but again, we don't have... Because do there are, there are um, sinabi nyo, increasing the export, ano, no? uh, the domestic sales Opo. from 30 to 70 percent, uh, while also enjoying the same uh, privileges. Uh, there's also an impact uh, to, to uh, the revenue. Mm -mm. No. Kasi po ang, Have you studied ang, all of those? Ang pinakamadali po kasi pang-justify ng tax incentives, yung first and foremost is the FDI in employment. Okay? But again, there is a cost. So pag nagpakita po tayo na employment generated, we must always bear in mind that um, employment generated at the cost of giving away the tax. No? So magkano po iyon? Uh, right now, again, because of the Tinta Law, um, NEDA is officially the one mandated to do the cost-benefit analysis. But on our part, we're also looking at certain data. And um, at, uh, I'm, not, I'm not authorized to, to, to uh, present the CBA um, at, as, as of this moment, Mr. Chair. But um, we're looking at data on how much this employment generated, how much is the cost for this employment generated. So, yun lang po. Uh, as to the FDI, we also have to look at the exports and the imports data, siguro. Um, maganda po sana maipresent din kung magkano yung export. Kasi pag tinignan po natin, match po natin sa imports, sumalabas. Um, kung hindi man napakaliit ng difference, that's also um, submitted to NEDA. Uh, minsan, mas mataas pa yung imports kesa sa exports. So, nagdadayute yung supposedly benefit po ng incentives. Uh, from what I understand, this is retroactive, you know, engineer. So meaning, uh, retroactive. Uh, may retroactivity uh, clause dito. Um, retroactive incentive, sir. Yes. No? Magbabayad pa po ang gobyerno. <laughs> Pag nagretroactive po tayo. I mean, uh, I think it, uh, if it's so far as prospective by ito, tama ba? Shall have the retroactive effect in so far as it does not. 
Meron dito, yun, no? Section 11, Retroactivity Clause. In the House Bill, Section 11. In the Senate Bill, it's Section 12. Yeah. I don't think babayaran ng gobyerno, but I, I, would, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I would assume this, this, I would assume this provisions will be applicable to the existing to the existing locators <coughs> hindi yung mga bagong locators is that how I understand well that's how I understand it no? kasi kung ano yung retroactive no? uh, your honor we are not privy to that uh, in section 11 but uh, <laughs> yeah we will we, are, we will be gladly amenable to deleting it <laughs> <laughs> well it's here no section 11 uh, I don't know if you have a copy and, of the uh, Mr. Chair, also, uh, we, I don't know, but we will be, if ever, we will be again submitting uh, also uh, a cost-benefit analysis uh, wherein we use the figures we submitted for TIMTA reports on our exports and the imports. So, for, for your information also and consideration and reference. But uh, can anyone answer that retroactivity clause in Section 11? Anong, how do you apply that retroactivity? Because my interpretation is retroactive to the existing. But can, and can someone from... Uh, what do you mean by, by that clause? Maybe from engineer? We, we're not... Uh, we're not privy to that section. Yeah, section uh, 12 of the Gordon version. reflected in this in this clause it's gone a long way your honor <laughs> in any case um, I'm juvie, I just want to understand you know uh, and daming incentives dito eh, no? in fact uh, it's even uh -huh. it's even better than what PESA is giving out no? better Be than everyone Go correct that's why I call it super IPA yes sir kasi nga meron siyang PESA uh, incentives, may BOI incentives, yes, and then merong pang from 70, yes, from 30 to 70. And it's uh, for 20 years, and it can also be extended. Correct. Um, ano ang revenue impact nito? No? Uh, in terms of, uh, obviously, mawawala, may mawawalan sa gobyerno eh. Correct? Um, so, magkano ang mawawala niya? That's what I want to understand. Apa, in so far as AFAB is concerned, whatever they're paying right now, if they wanted to be exempted from everything, is the amount Malit of... Yun, eh. Yes, mil, by the millions po, ano? No. Pero, Pero yung mga um, sa locators... Sa po, nasa ngayon ay nag enjoy na 5% tax on gross income earned. Right now, it's unlimited po eh. There's no uh, cut-off period unlike the income tax holiday, which is the current incentives. So, if they're just going to continue with the 5% tax on gross income earned, then that will be their um, more or less wala kang revenue loss doon sa 5% tax. Ang, ang loss mo ay nandun po sa pagka nagbenta ka outside, which is tax and duty free in the domestic market. We would have to get data po when it comes to that because the tinta is not capturing that po. Uh, engineer, what I understand no, if this law gets approved for example, si uh, Mr. Tan Chavez will start selling domestically. Diba? Uh, sabi niya kanina, you're exporting 100%, no? And then all of a sudden, he will now sell 70% of his goods domestically. Pero, he will not pay uh, VAT exempt siya and pwede pa siya mag-import ng uh, duties and VAT uh, uh, free. No? So, 
may revenue loss ito. Ano yung mga, ano, ang gusto kong malaman, applicable ito sa kanya eh. Correct? When this law gets approved, it's applicable to him. Yes. Your Honor, we would just like to clarify, as it is that what we are doing right now, we are employing the same rules for domestic sales, meaning all items that are to be sold domestically will have to pay taxes and duties before leaving the free port. It will be the same. Uh, what we are only asking is they be allowed to sell, but they pay taxes and duties, but they maintain their export exporter status so that they retain the 5% incentive. Because uh, we believe that uh, while in the past we encourage diversification of exports, uh, what we see is that the reality is 100% of the inputs to production most are, are imported. And uh, the, the purpose for uh, putting a minimum to export is so that our supposedly local inputs will get exported. But the reality is there are no local inputs most of the time. That's why, uh, like in the case in Bataan, we are host to manufacturers of coats, uh, Tory Birds, Kate Spade, Michael Kors. Why can't our people enjoy buying this domestically? But uh, this, this will have to pay taxes and duties anyway before they sell it domestically. May, uh, right now, under the current regime, pag nagbenta ka, outside of your 30% um, uh, export, you have to pay taxes already, correct? Yes. yes. Both import and uh, when you sell yes. domestically. Yes. It would be the same. Uh, it, as lang yung, yung ratio, yes. diba? from 30% thir from, uh, to 70%. Uh, of course, yeah. But because of that raise of 40%, they're exempted from paying VAT when they sell? No, they pay. Locally? They pay. But For example, know. like Petruca, uh, the DPWH is trying to buy all of their products. So, wouldn't it be better that instead of them exporting it and we import it again to bring back to the Philippines, they just sell it domestically? But, but in this case, DPWH will have to pay back. Uh, when yeah. they buy. That will be added to yeah, the, uh, the price. Uh, 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 I don't know. That's, that's our understanding as far as the lower house version is. <laughs> I'm not sure of it. This, because uh, I think uh, there will be revenue loss when you sell domestic under this, uh, under this uh, proposal. Of course, Mr. Chair. <laughs> then there's another thing. No? Itong, um, Sorry, if I may, Mr. Chair. Um, in section 4, Mr. Chair, it says here, the very last portion, very last paragraph, FAB Enterprises may generate up to 100% of its income from sources within the customs territory but without loss of eligibility to avail of the incentives in this act, <coughs> subject to section 4F of this act. So, in the hindi po siya masyadong klaro kung ano yung kung ano yung gusto nilang bigyan ng incentives pati yung benta sa labas ng customs territory but having said that Mr. Chair um, ang isa kasi namin nakikita dito kasi ngayon currently sir meron tayong 70-30 provisions ano po so ang ginagawa po natin dyan o pinagbabayad natin sila paglabas po sa customs territory or sa domestic market nila, just yung for pong, the information yung pong, yun nga po yung pong pag-compute ng applicable taxes and duties, no? Kasi po pag nag-import po yan, okay. para po yan sa isang buong produkto. Hmm. Okay? So, isipin nyo po kung 70-30 yung sales niyan. Okay? Uh, hahatiin pa po natin kung magkano yung in-import that corresponds only to the 30% and then compute for the tax and duty applicable only to the 30%. Okay? Eh, kasi mga parte po yan eh. So, pag in-import po yan, for example, uh, automotive. So, what you're saying is administratively, it's going to be Opo. complicated. So, doon po tayo nagkakaroon minsan ng maaaring uh, i-dispute. Wala, wala naman leakage kasi nagbabayad naman po talaga. Pero, uh, yun po yung question doon. So, paano po yung, uh, especially this time na yung proposal din po, yung customs, medyo mas uh, 
mas labas na labas na talaga sila sa, sa, sa economic zone kasi they want the authority already na sila na yung mismo magman nung pumapasok at lumalabas. Mm -hmm. no? Hindi naman po namin dinidispute, kaya lang, again, uh, compared to other economic zones, magiging iba po yung kanilang treatment. Mm -hmm. no? So, may comment din po doon ng customs, um, ang sinasabi nga nila, since sila yung merong mandate at uh, may responsibilidad to, especially pag nagkaroon na po ng case, No? Uh, so, under the CMTA, sila po yung may authority na dapat nag-check at meron nag-administer noong mga klase ng duties and taxes with regards to separate customs territory. Mm -hmm. So, nandun po yung sa kanilang comment. So, can you, uh, uh, can DOF compute the revenue impact? of this proposal. Yun ang gusto ko hong malaman. Eh. Pwede po. Uh, hihingi lang po kami ng uh, data po siguro sa, uh, through the committee na lang po siguro. Yes, yeah, we, we, can, we need we to exactly, kasi marami siyang incent new incentives, no? Outside of the PESA, outside of BOI. What I want to understand is anong revenue impact mm. niya? Okay. Anong mawawala sa gobyerno? Kasi siya na po yung may pinakaibang regime Correct. compared to the other IPAs, yes. right? the other zones. That's why I call it super IPA nga ito. Uh -oh. eh. So, hindi na level din yung playing field. Yeah. Although, nirecognize po namin yung achievements we've been... Um, The AFAB has been uh, has been discussing this with the DOF as well. So, uh, pinakita din po nila yung kanilang achievements. And in fact, yung the way they have raised the, the they they have um, reduced the poverty level in Bataan is really um, very very ano po yun, amazing <laughs> para sa amin, no? So it's one economic zone that has proven its worth sa palagay po namin. Pero ang sinasabi po namin, um, hindi po incentives. Kasi sa ngayon, pare-pareho po kayo ng incentives eh. Kung yun po yung zero in natin na nagiging um, reason for success, then why is it that even those who are given 5% tax on GIE, even outside the zones, and within the customs territory, have not experienced that kind of success? Baka po yung napakaganda yung management ng, ng zone. Kasi tulad nga ng sabi ng locator ninyo, na inyo pong uh, isang po niyo yung locator, um, the way you did business or the way you manage your enterprises and locators, you really handled it well. You give, uh, you, you make sure that you lessen the cost. And that's very important to business. Yun din po yung nakita namin sa pag-aaral. Director Jovi, anong nakikita niyong complication uh, with train to being advocated here in Congress? So we train to, um, the DOF naman is very open to discussing with the different IPAs. In fact, the different provisions that they think are very, very crucial for them, we are open to discussing and, um, and negotiating in terms of uh, ultimately benefiting the entire country naman po. Yun naman talaga. Um, ang complication is once we pass this law, we have again another super IPA, sabi nyo nga, that has a very different regime. That is not captured by by the scheme that we are looking at right now. And again, ang punto po namin is modernization, hindi po tatanggalin. So, ang sinasabi namin kung kay sir na exporter, 100% exporter, you might think that it's more um, more relevant for you to have more deductions, super deductions, rather than those uh, income tax holiday, di yun po yung ibigay natin. And that's more performance-based and that's more transparent because we can see really how much is being invested, how much yung bumabalik sa ekonomiya, at ilang talaga yung, yung na-employ natin, employment generated. Kasi kung pareho lang po ng, ng economic activity both inside and outside the zone, and the one is getting the tax exemption, we must be able to justify why you need not pay the taxes while the other one is paying it. This run counter to train to itong proposal. Ah, uh, opo. Ano yung uh, pinaka maybe a top top two or top three na uh, kaibahan sa proposal ng train to cakad dito. Just for the information, everyone. Para. Siguro po yung ta number one is a type of incentives. We're we're getting away from income tax pure incentives, uh, meaning yung totally free tax exam free from from uh, from doing your business uh, we're trying again to to uh, redo the scheme such that 
uh, together with the BOI, sana na dito yung BOI, um, we could give or we could give a certain menu, an option also to the IPA and to the locators or to the business entities. Ano yung mas relevant sa inyo when it comes to putting up your business here in the Philippines? Of course, the incentives cannot answer for everything. We have the high power cost, may problema tayo sa labor. Hindi po yun kain sagutin lahat ng tax incentives. So, pero gusto, gusto natin gawin mas relevant kasi ang tagal na rin po ng incentives natin. That's one. Second, um, ngayon po, under discussion po yung, yung tenure or yung period of incentives, so which is more relevant, 20 years and then renewable pa po ba yan? Or medyo lesser and then magbigay tayo ng conditions kung gusto nating i-renew. Right, but um, having said that, uh, we're not even sure whether train 2 will, will take off or not. No, hindi pa siya nakaalis ng stasyon eh. So, um, uh, in the uh, hierarchy of things, this is being discussed ahead of train 2. So, um, that's why in my view, as long as train 2 is still up in the air, um, then there's merit discussing this type of uh, bills, no? uh, whichever comes first. Of course, we respect the uh, administration's trust but hindi pa natin alam kasi ano yung itsura ng train to. Eh. Like you said, it's still you know, being negotiated, being uh, discussed. You know, so, uh, uh, but in the same time, um, we have a proposal here that can benefit the people of Bataan. And it's unfair naman if we will, uh, we will not know the final outcome of train to. You know. So, um, that's why I'm getting some information and signals from the OF, what will be the, uh, uh, the uh, provisions that will be, uh, kumbaga, that will be um, the non-negotiables no, for the DOF so that we can accommodate that or at least take that into consideration. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank I, you, Paul. And then, I, 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 uh, kanina na mention mo too, but Please submit to us uh, your position paper regarding this, and uh, that uh, I will give a lot of weight to the uh, voice of DOF, considering that you guys are the ones spearheading the tax reform program, and um, we don't want a scenario wherein ma approve to then iri repeal nyo after one month or two months, no? Hindi naman, di ba parang uh, or ma approve to tapos ivivito ng presidente because ayo ng DOF no so we don't want that type of friction to happen uh, what we want is a uh, harmonious uh, direction on uh, putting this uh, uh, bill together no so uh, we will give a lot of um, uh, weight on the uh, position paper of DOF All right. with that um, DOF uh, DFA see uh, Mr. Uh, Oxilan Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, and thank you for inviting us uh, over to this uh, special committee hearing, sir. So on behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs, I just would like to express that uh, we welcome and support the initiative uh, uh, entitled An Act Further Strengthening the Powers and Functions of the Authority of the Freeport of Bataan, or AFAB in short. Uh, for the FA, uh, it fully supports uh, any initiative aimed at strengthening and further developing the country's economic zones as they're important in attracting foreign investments. For as we be, uh, based on reports and feedback uh, from our different uh, foreign service posts, uh, the Philippines is considered a good model for free ports and special economic zones as uh, mentioned by Director Juvi here as an engine or driver of economic growth. No? and with both models already being su the subject of uh, some study and emulation of other countries. But having said that, but I, I think there's really still a need for us to you know, devise ways and means to really make our uh, economic zones uh, competitive as uh, uh, compared to other, other countries. No? The DFA believes that the said legislative measure would contribute significantly to strengthening AFAB, uh, particularly in uh, improving its operations, uh, thereby attracting foreign investment not just to the region in Bataan, but also to our country in general, and that is necessary for uh, our sustainable and inclusive growth and development that will benefit not just uh, uh, a small sector of our society, but uh, the larger uh, sector uh, of our uh, country in general. So I think uh, the bill or initiative highlights really uh, 
in terms uh, of making or highlights the efforts really making our country more competitive, globally competitive, uh, competitive as well as uh, our efforts to really you know uh, uh, promote uh, economic growth uh, for the country, which we need to really attain our uh, development plans, also medium-term and long-term development plans. So. The DFA maintains that uh, as far as the investment uh, attracting uh, features the bill, uh, of course we're not, uh, we're not like any other agencies uh, like DOF uh, that is uh, uh, really uh, have a direct hand as far as really providing incentives for our foreign investors. So we leave the matter to our uh, uh, agencies that have uh, expertise, uh, uh, in terms of uh, really uh, providing investment for our foreign investors and really crafting uh, specific uh, uh, provisions in the bill uh, to really study further and really make it more effective so that uh, uh, we can make uh, it more uh, uh, competitive and attractive for our foreign investors. So we also believe that strengthening the powers and functions of the authority uh, of the Freeport areas uh, Obatan will not only be beneficial in attracting investment, but similar to other free ports, will allow for expanded economic activity, which can lead to generation of local employment, technology tra uh, transfer, skills development, and revenue for our country in general. So, moreover, the Philippines currently has a sizable trade deficit with the rest of the world, and any initiative that can potentially help in boosting exports and overall competitiveness will be very beneficial to the economy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Um, thank you, Mr. Oxelan. Um, Banco Central, Tony Arcalde. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Banco Central would like to thank the Senate <coughs> for this opportunity to uh, give our comments on the draft House Bill 6524 and Senate Bill uh, number 1747. I uh, would like to note that we were also given a similar opportunity in the lower house to comment on House Bill number 4106, which is the precursor of House Bill number 6524. And on February 28, 2017, we submitted our position paper. And we note that um, the present House Bill number 6524 have, has actually um, incorporated most of uh, the comments which we have stated in our position paper. However, there are just four uh, minor things which remain outstanding. Um, for the first part, actually for Section 13F, this is uh, not actually a specific, uh, this is not actually specific to the Banco Central, but um, we'd like to note that this provision which gives um, privileges or incentives to uh, locators for um, contracts for the government may not be aligned with our procurement law. For um, Section 13J, we would just like to clarify um, the provision which uh, says, as the case may be, although we note that um, uh, government borrowings are subject to uh, the approval and the opinion of the Monetary Board of the BSP, depending on whether it is a foreign a foreign loan or a domestic loan. Uh, maybe uh, the Senate would like to remove the provision as the case may be and uh, substi substitute it with uh, maybe um, in accordance with law because this is provided under the, uh, the charter of the BSP. For section 13S, um, on the, on the last sentence, which are in line 17 to 21, which says that uh, banks and financial institutions to be established in the FAB shall be under the supervision of the BSP and shall be subject to the existing banking laws, rules, and regulations. Uh, we just like to note that not all financial institutions are subject to the uh, supervision of the BSP, so this might expand our, well, our, um, uh, our regulatory powers, uh, which might impinge on the regulatory powers of other regulatory agencies, such as the SEC. So maybe we can insert the provision um, to um, 
to clarify that only those financial institutions with quasi uh, banking functions or engaged in quasi banking activities are are subject to the regulation of the BSP. And for the last uh, provision, which is section 19. Uh, this is actually uh, in accordance with uh, the existing provisions of the MOR FXT. That's all, Mr. Chair. Uh, may we also be given the chance to give um, to submit a supplemental position paper to uh, elaborate more on the rationale for uh, for these four um, provisions, which we are giving comments on. Thank you, Attorney. Are you basing your comments on the House version? Yes, uh, primarily yes, in the House version. Primarily, but uh, there are also provisions in the Senate bill which are the in the same. Uh, which are similar to the provisions of the House bill. Right. I understand uh, during the uh, hearing in the lower house that uh, BSP participated in that. Uh, yes. And yes. Although incorporate it was not me. <laughs> incorporate who dito yung mga most of uh, yes, comments, most. No? But uh, these four remain outstanding, specifically uh, the ones on on the well. Well, this is the general comment on the procurement law. Okay. Uh, in which uh, maybe we should uh, just stick to the um, to bidding, which uh, which is supposed to give the most advantageous uh, deal for the government, um, and also on 13J, we uh, requested that um, that the provision on government borrowings uh, be be in accordance with existing laws. But in this bill, it still uh, it says as the case may be, so mm -hmm. it would be uh, it would be better clarified. As to the um, as to those financial institutions which are under the supervision of the BSP, they should be clarified, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney. Thank please you. submit to us your uh, uh, supplemental position paper. Yes, thank right. you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you. Uh, next will be. Um, I think we have a representative from BOI here, sir. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, BOI, uh, as an attached agency of the Department of Trade and Industry, manifests the, the position uh, which has been submitted by our mother agency to the committee. That's all, Mr. Chair. What is that position? Yes, sir. We Can you uh, yeah, sure. just uh, state it briefly, the position of your... Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. Mother agencies, trade and industry, no? Yeah, Department okay. of Trade and Industry, sir. So, the department acknowledges the empowering of IFAB to initiate development and investment promotion on its own may be up for a decentralized economic strategy the TTI reiterates that the current PESA framework remains relevant and effective. Uh, further, the DTI suggests for the DOF, the Department of Local Interior and Local Government, the ILG, and the Department of Justice, the OJ, to be solicited for comments and recommendations on the proposed bill as well, specifically on relevant concerns within the scope of their respective mandates. That's all, Your Honor. In other words, you support the bill. There are issues with, there are issues with uh, our co-attached agency with PESA. And so uh, uh, we will just abide by the position of our mother agency. And the main position, Diko? Actually, the first part, sir, eh, yung about uh, the PESA one. So you don't support the bill? Which one? Because it's a bit, you know, decentralized, you support decentralized, and then what's it really? Sir, it's a bit more for your honor. That's just to say, do you support the bill or you don't support the bill? So we'll have uh, um, some idea of what the position of BOI. Because in effect, this is also your competitor. 
Actually, we co we complement your honor. All IPAs complement with each other. Well, now you're, this is going to be your competitor. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Sir, may I? Yeah, just just give us a brief on the ano ano position of uh, BOI so regarding this bill. Yeah, the DTI maintains that its attached agency, PESA, is, manda is mandated as the principal government agency task to operate, administer, manage, and develop the special economic zones and to, to promote the flow of investors, whether foreign and local, into such zones as enshrined in Republic Act number 7916. Thank you. The department opines that the post measure would have AFAB superseding PESA in the latter's regulatory and supervisory roles, thereby deteriorating its mandate particularly through the formulation and endowment of fiscal incentives. Therefore, we recommend for the retention of the established PESA framework on fiscal and non-fiscal incentives for purposes of achieving a viable economic strategy. So, uh, in other words, you don't support this bill because it will um, somehow affect PESA's uh, operation, correct? Um, next will be um, Kaap. Mayroon ba tayong kasama sa Kaap? Uh -oh, Ma'am? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, uh, first I would like to thank you for inviting us today. And um, with respect to the, I think the only amendment uh, wherein we are affected is uh, the transfer from Civil Aeronautics Board of the Coordination regarding airport operations. Uh, uh, we we don't have no objection, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, we support the initiative, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Okay, naman. Pika was mentioned here, eh. so... Um, yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman. It was actually... The, the original was Civil and yes, Aeronautics Mr. Board, Chairman. no? It was replaced to CAAP. And you're, you, walang problema pa? No, obje no objection. All right, thank you. Um, PPA, ma'am? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for affording the PPA the opportunity to present it, uh, its comments. Uh, PPA is a government instrumentality with corporate powers. It's under the supervision of the GCG. PPA has jurisdiction over all ports in the country except those um, uh, falling under the jurisdiction of other port bodies like the SBMA, the CPA, and those uh, devolved to local government units. Uh, one of the major um, functions of PPA is uh, to prescribe rules, or regulations, procedures, and guidelines governing the establishment, construction, maintenance, and operation of all other ports, including private ports in the country. Uh, this is the reason why, uh, pr even prior to the effectivity of the AFAB law, uh, PPA has already approved the construction of a lot of uh, private ports within the jurisdiction of AFAB, and these private ports were issued a uh, permit to operate by PPA, and these permits are still valid uh, un until uh, today and even uh, five years uh, from now. Uh, it is for this reason, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, PPA is proposing that in section, section three, uh, and, uh, no. uh, section. Which version po, yung, uh, uh, the, sen the Senate version, Senate. Mr. Chair. Uh, six. Se section 6F, uh, the one wherein there's a mention of the CAAP, we are proposing that uh, so far as the operation of uh, ports, there should also be coordination with the PPA. So that is our proposed uh, um, amendment in so far as section uh, G of the original version uh, F in the proposed uh, amendment. Okay, can you repeat that, ma'am, section... Three? Uh, section six. Section six. Uh, item G, uh, now F, Mr. Chair. 
section six. Section six, letter G. Letter F, uh, in line. Ah, okay. In line um, six, uh, Mr. Chair, um, maybe moving areas in co coordination with the Philippine Ports Authority. We'd like to, in to include uh, to emphasize that there's a need for for a fab to coordinate with PPA, just like uh, for. Uh, airports and uh, we would like also to stress Mr. Chair that we interpose the objection to AFAB uh, issuing the permits later on after the expiration of the ones issued by PPA uh, but we also but we interpose objection however uh, to the expansion of the territorial jurisdiction of AFAB specifically on extension of up to 15 kilometers from the shoreline uh, because it is PPA's possession that offshore regulations should uh, should continue to be with PPA like for example the uh, the putting up of the vessel traffic management system uh, pilotage the issuance of clearance and a departure for the vessels uh, this uh, this function should remain with PPA but all others we uh, we have no other uh, objections. So it included here is the 15, uh, uh, 15 kilometers no? from the shoreline. From the shoreline, and this is under the jurisdiction of PPA. At present. Current, at present. Yes, sir. So lahat ng mga activity ng barko doon, yes, sir. PPA ang may uh, regulation. Yes, may sir. regulation. Yes, sir. We under this proposal, it will be now be under uh, um, AFAB. AFAB. Yes, sir. Ano nakikita niyo complication, ma'am? Uh, here are some of the the reasons. That and this uh, can expand to the entire province of Bataan, eh, yes, correct? Uh, is that how I understand it, no, engineer? So, I would ask, uh, uh, my understanding here is the entire province of the Bataan, yes. 15 meters from the shoreline, will now be under yes. AFAB, no, yes, if sir. it's uh, yes, sir, uh, if it's declared under them under certain conditions, no. Yes. Mr. Chair, only as it pertains to. Uh, coastal areas within coastal coastal area. Area, within areas annexed to the farm. Correct. Correct. So, ano nakikita niyong complication, attorney? Mr. Chair, for example, um, we, number one, um, we consider the proximity of the uh, FAB to the ports of Manila where we're using the same uh, entrance ex exit channel and we're using the same infrastructure. Um, Pilotage, for example, uh, it is within the port district defined by PPA. So having maybe um, pilots uh, only in that particular area would be, um, uh, it would be better if we have pilots serving uh, a larger area rather than, you know, confined within the, the vicinity of the jurisdiction of... of what do you mean pilots? Uh, they, are the, they are licensed, uh, Mr. Chair, by... Uh, licensed by Marina and they're appointed by PPA and their main function is to assist the vessel uh, because they're familiar with the depths of the, the, the channel or the current so they, they assist the vessel in going in and out of the ports and these pilots are appointed by uh, PPA uh, present uh, pilots uh, in being utilized uh, in the Marivelis area are within a license are appointed by PPA and where are they located in Marivelis? Um, in Manila. In and Manila. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So they direct the boats in Maraveles from yeah. Manila. Yes, yes that, sir. Is that how it works? Yeah, uh, this, the pilotage services are being uh, provided by the Manila Pilotage District because we have a lot of pilotage districts uh, uh, across the country. Yes, sir. And well, what then? What will be the complication if that uh, function will be transferred under uh, AFAB? Isn't that uh, much better? Gagaan yung trabaho nyo dahil sila na ngayon ang who will direct the uh, boats. I'm not an expert in um, marine transport, no, but I'm just... It may have, uh, Mr. Chair, bearing on the cost of the services to be provided because uh, pilotage services would require uh, equipment which are capital intensive. So there would be... Uh, 
if uh, the, the, the equipment uh, being used by pilots are, are maximized, then it would, will have a benefit on the cost of pilotage. So you mean uh, the cost in Manila will now increase no, because uh, of fewer definitely. traffic? Um, is that how not really, Mr. Chair, but assuming they will have an expanded uh, market or, or clients, then it may have a bearing on, um, it may have the effect of uh, lowering the, the tariff. Mm, okay. Yes. How about safety? Uh, safety? Is there any complications yeah. to the safety? Uh, uh, condition, inclement oh, yeah. weather. I'm not sure, Mr. Chair, whether in their charter they're allowed to to um, to hire uh, harbor masters because harbor masters are the one in charge of ensuring that safety in the ports uh, is maintained. Uh, it is not clear in the in the mandate whether they are allowed to to uh, to hire, but. Uh, under existing regulations of PPA, uh, harbor master, uh, the functions of the harbor master in Manila uh, extends beyond the, the... The harbor master functions of PPA covers among others. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you can, if you're the technical guy, you can, yes. you can uh, share with us your uh, knowledge. Uh, from the technical department. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Um, can you... Can you State your name and yes. your responsibility in PPA. Ah, jump <laughs> I'm Ray Delmar Jr. from the Philippine Ports Authority. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Chair, and so far as the provision of pilotage area, it is uh, directly under the supervision of the PPA's harbor pilot, uh, harbor master, because we have harbor master functions wherein which our harbor master can direct. Uh, and uh, a vessel where it will dock, where it will berth, whether on anchorage or alongside, alongside berth. Uh, for instance, you spoke a while ago regarding the safety considerations. Uh, during inclement weather, it is the, the power of the harbor master to direct uh, the vessels to go on anchorage or in, in areas where there is safe. There will be shelter for the vessel. Also, during port congestion, uh, say, for instance, there will be congestion again in Manila. They may, the harbor master may utilize the use of uh, other ports, like, for instance, private ports, uh, to divert some of the traffic. Also, for special cargoes, wherein um, a specific cargo requires a specific uh, specialized handling or skills not present in government ports, but present in private ports, say AFAB, they can tap uh, these ports. These are some of the examples uh, on the, uh, on the uh, functions and powers of the harbor, harbor master of PPA, sir. But what is the complication now? For example, AFAB will set up their own. I would assume these talents can be hired or developed no? Uh, they will have their own harbor masters, they will have their own pilotage. But what is now the complication of having their own uh, uh, marine transport uh, organization and then Manila will have their own? Anong, anong complication doon? Mr. Chair, if so I may be now, allowed to I, I don't see any complication. Yeah, eh, I'll make no? a manifestation. Sige pa, engineer, you can yeah, uh, for the longest time, we have been coordinating with the PPA. And uh, unfortunately, there was a change of administration and change of leaderships. But the intention is for AFAB to hire the PPA accredited pilots. So we don't intend, uh, we, I, we don't believe that we are empowered to accredit the, the pilots. So... Uh, our arrangement is such that uh, we require PPA accredited pilots to assist vessels in going in and out of our ports. Is it your intention to set up this type of organization? Uh, we don't have the, our plantilla does not cover. So you don't, uh, aside from it's not covered, you, you don't have any intention of putting up uh, those types well, of Right to the wisdom uh, that we share with the PPA that there will be uh, a 
economies of scale in ah, okay. having just one group covering an area rather than splitting it up and end up with higher tariff rates. Because we implement, uh, as far as AFAB controlled parts are concerned, we, we adapted and implement the same guidelines, the same fees of the PPA for uniformity. Th and that being said, uh, I guess uh, we will uh, take into consideration the suggestion of PPA you know, to make that explicit in the uh, proposal. We have no objection to that, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Engineer. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Um, next will be um, Bureau of Fire, sir. In behalf of our Chief BAP Director, Leonard Maniago, uh, as well as with my uh, Chief Directorial staff, we would like to thank Ms. August Marti for inviting the Bureau of Protection here. We already, Mr. Chair, submitted our for, uh, pages of uh, position paper. And with the permission, I would like to dispense the background in the rationale. I would like only to read our uh, recommendation so that we uh, can have a good time to get rid of the other. Initially, we, we, we support Initially, we support the purpose of the Senate and the Congress uh, version. But uh, hearing a uh, different argument and uh, which some of those who are invited here, we will leave only to the Congress and the Senate to come up what is the best proper, especially the recommendation of the, the, the OF. And particularly, I uh, would like to read our recommendation. There are only three. Now, that uh, the BOP shall have the sole authority to implement the provision of RA 9514, which is known as the Park of the Public Language. In the proposed report area of Batan, since the said law that provides such power and function pursuant to Section 4 of the Public Act, number 9514. As we all know, PESA is the one who implement previously of the inspection under 9514, so and so forth, but it was being questioned and decided by the Department of Justice that the sole authority was based on the BFP. That's the reason why PESA, we, we, we entered into MOA with the PESA. The sole, uh, the sole uh, function now for the inspection and so forth was already on the BFP. We already submitted the guidelines or the copy of the MOA for the guidance of the Senate and Congress. Second, that the GMC circular number 2018-01 dated January 4, 2018. Now, in relation to RA 11032, we know that previously the GMC in, is doing business. But fortunately, it was been put into a Republic Act. Kasama po rin yung business one-stop shop processing. So, should be used in the implementation of PARC code the 2008 over the report area. Yun din po yung ginagamit namin. Because in coordination with the PESA, we have already the centralizing unit because there is a MOA. Nagtutuloy-tuloy po kami sa business one-stop shop. And I would like also to give an information to this August body that there's another one, JMC, when it comes to online building permit processing. And uh, the, 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 the Bureau of Local Government is already crafting the implementer and rules and guidelines of that. Actually, the rollout of Mr. Chair, last week, dito sa National Capital Region. Lastly, the submitted mo uh, BFP and PESA may be utilized to guide the sample implementation 9514. We are willing to enter into MOA to wrap up if this bill will pursue. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Engineer. Next will be uh, PAGCOR. Sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. We would like to take this opportunity to thank the committee for inviting us uh, to be able to give our comments to the pending bills. Actually, um, Parkour was uh, involved in only one, one provision, and um, 
based on the we already submitted our position paper and based on our uh, position paper we um we uh, welcome the uh the bill and strengthening the uh the powers and authority of APA, afab however um since the uh the bill has uh, will be um excluding the powers of pagor in uh, regulating uh, games of chance we oppose the bill um and we would uh, maintain that uh, all games of chance in the Philippines should be regulated and under PAGCOR's authority and control. Mr. Chair. You only oppose that provision. Niniman buong bill. Yes, Your Honor. Not the whole, the whole bill. Only the portion wherein uh, we were um, uh, okay. taken out. Because in the pending, yeah, in the, um, the law right now, Pagcor is still there with supervision and control over um, gaming and amusement. Anything else, attorney? And that's all. Uh, attorney, itong ano, itong, uh, I think this one made special mention of the offshore online gaming facilities. Um, right now, I know there's a lot of operation here, no? Um, Yes, Your Honor. In the, um, in the in in Metro Manila, but assuming that will be allowed in AFAB, but uh, Pagcor will still be uh, the one regulating it. Are you amenable to that? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, right now we have um, uh, offshore gaming operators um, located at uh, Clark. It's also an echo zone and uh, also in Subic. My next question, in sa mga Clark, so in mga isa ibang echo zones, no? yes, or freeport zones, what is the relationship of Pagcor to those uh, offshore gaming companies inside the zones? They, they get their, uh, their licenses to operate from Pagcor. So, so you they cannot operate without uh, going through Pagcor. So Pagcor is still the regulator? Yes, Your Honor. And what is the re relationship of Pagcor to Clark? And to those IPAs, we only uh, we only oversee the the operations of the uh, gaming operators. But as to the, the um, we respect the incentives that they are given. Instead of uh, getting the five percent franchise tax of Pagcor, we leave it to be uh, collected by the echo zones. The the uh, whatever those echo zones. Uh, can give in terms of incentives that will prevail. Yes, Your Honor. And we respect that. Who now? Um, ano ang relationship between the IPA, uh, let's say Clark and Pagcor? Who who gives um, the license to operate? Well, uh, before they can uh, operate, Your Honor, uh, there are some requirements uh, that they have to to uh, um, uh, submit to Pagcor and to the uh, Echo Zone. So, for example, uh, Clark gives them the license to operate. They still have to go to Pagcor. If they are going to operate in offshore gaming. Uh, uh, and which, which takes precedent? The license from, uh, the permit from Clark or the license from Pagcor? Um, they can be given a uh, permit by, uh, let's say by Clark, but if they cannot meet our requirements, they cannot operate still. Ah, okay. So kahit na merong permit, let's say from Clark, they cannot operate? Yes. And do you want that the same procedure applied here? Yes, we would like that to be maintained. Okay. Um, but this is only pertains to uh, offshore gaming. How about the other? Um, other uh, the offshore gaming of was only uh, added, Your Honor, but uh, the existing law States games and amusements already. gaming Thank you for asking. Uh, I, I would be actually requesting to clarify. Uh, okay. What we do have are BPO companies who are uh, back office provider of back office uh, services, incidentally to online gaming companies operating abroad. That was before, but. Uh, after the controversies and uh, the gray areas concerning online gaming, because what was 
uh, what developed was that even indirect uh, companies indirectly servicing online gaming companies are considered online gaming companies already. So uh, that started the exodus of these companies from the fab because they are not really into online gaming. They are providing back office service to online gaming companies situ situated and operating abroad. They only provide uh, like call center, BPO. Uh, to these online gaming companies? Yes. And wh where are the online gaming companies? They are uh, elsewhere, in China, in okay. Malaysia. But hindi ho sila kumukuha ng bets? No, no. Or, or wagers? Yeah. But uh, there was a, a, an executive order categorizing even these companies to be recognized or treated as online gaming companies. So it started the decrease in interest. So th there's really, there was an exodus. And actually, uh, we would like to manifest that we don't have any objection to the position of PAGCOR uh, to maintain what was prescribed in the original charter that they uh, regulate uh, games of chances. Because our position is uh, we never had any game of chance at all. Uh, if ever, that will be prospective. And uh, categorical, categorically, we don't have, we did not have any uh, online gaming companies per se. So Thank right you, now, po, as we speak, wala na hong backroom rin. Operations well, in, wala inside. inside merong, may natirang isa, dalawa from more than 35. <laughs> So, but they're, uh, they're seriously looking into other, uh, uh, technically, ITBPM, IT, IT uh, honest to goodness, ITBPM businesses. So, parang they, they lost interest in uh, companies involved in online gaming, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. So, we'll, we'll wait for your position paper, um, Attorney. We already I submitted think, um, our position paper I earlier. I think uh, AFAB Liman is uh, amenable to uh, um, accommodating your your position. Um, next is uh, GSIS. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and uh, fellow resource speaker. Uh, on behalf of GSIS, we would like to thank the committee for inviting GSIS. This is uh, the first time that we were asked to comment on the bill. Uh, to my recollection, we did not participate in the House uh, deliberation. So uh, we, we would just like to ask for time to submit our position paper. But in the meantime, let me just give our initial evaluation in so far as uh, provisions in the Senate bill that would impact the GSIS, which is uh, Section 8 and uh, amending Section 21 which basically uh, provides for capitalization of the AFAB. And that would include, this is the amendment now in, in the vote, how vote versions of the bill, which will include those properties conveyed to GSIS and SSS under proclamation number 540 as amended by 900. Um, we would uh, express our reservation uh, upon our in initial evaluation of, of course, uh, subject to further study and perhaps uh, discussions with the stakeholders concerned. Because uh, both proclamation were issued by then President Marcos, uh, mandate uh, uh, reserving these properties, which is about 278 hectares, uh, for GSIS and the then uh, AFAB, I, I, I think before it was not known as AFAB, but uh, another name. And SSS, for the purpose of developing the development into housing projects for residences of certain uh, municipalities. And uh, I, I don't know with AFAB, but uh, to, to our knowledge, uh, it has not yet been uh, officially conveyed to GSIS and uh, no development or any uh, developments has happened since then. But uh, based on those two, two proclamations and subsequently uh, amended by another PD, which now specifically conveyed 60 hectares, if I'm not mistaken, to AFAB, then uh, the balance to both GSIS and SSS, again, for the purpose of development. Uh, if 
the proposed bills would convert this into capitalization, then uh, in effect it will be runs con it run, runs contrary to the purposes of the two proclamations. So um, either we, we conduct further research because if this was really conveyed to both GSIS and SSS, then uh, I think uh, both GSIS and SSS should be entitled to just compensation before it will be conveyed as part of the capitalization. Or better still, uh, if it is still in, in the name of the Republic of the Philippines, then uh, we would prefer a repeal or a, an express repeal of uh, PD545 so that uh, the mandate given to GSS and SSS will no longer be there, but everything will be in APA, rather than another bill uh, inserting this provision as a additional capitalization, we would in that case, we, we would prefer that it will be an express appeal of PD-545. That will be our initial comment. Attorney, so itong property na ito, hindi pa nako-convey? Uh, based on our initial evaluation, wala pang conveyance. But, but uh, the conveyance was meant for housing? Meant for housing for residents of, I housing think, three municipalities. Housing for who? Kaninong housing? For, uh, for, for workers? The workers. Yes. Of yes, the Bataan Export yes. Processing Zone? Yes. yes, okay. So in fact, the, I think the, the term is resident, so that is another issue because uh, for the GSIS, we, we, number one, our mandate is to offer housing units only to government, our members only, and we are not allowed to develop or offer any housing projects to private individuals, so that is another issue. Kung hindi pa nako-convey, uh, where is the, there's a proclamation already. There's so the act of conveyance lang ang hindi pa nagagawa? Yes, uh, we have yet to find a document which formally conveys this to the three of us, the SSS, GSS. And so in uh, fact, that to that PD was never perfected? Yes, it was never implemented and so forth. Uh, yeah, Mr. Here? Chair, uh, what we know is that uh, based on the proclamation, it mandates that uh, yeah, the authority will uh, retain 60 hectares out of the total 270-something. 277 point something. Uh, and uh, the intention is for both the GSIS and SSS to develop for housing. Uh, there has been no conveyance whatsoever. And uh, we have been coordinating in the past with both the GSIS and the SSS. And we are in receipt, but this is uh, from the previous administration before 2016, we are in receipt of their formal uh, communication stating that they are not interested in further developing housing in that area. So uh, that's why we, we suggested to our representation, to our congressman, that better to be clarified uh, that, uh, yeah, it, instead of uh, the authority retaining only 60 hectares, that uh, it would be at entitled to retain the entire proclaimed area. So we can proceed with further developments, if ever. Because we, we cannot touch the area because uh, we're limited to 60 hectares. Honestly, uh, Mr. Chair, to be very honest, the developments introduced by the EPSA covered more than 60 hectares. They have built houses in over uh, 90 hectares. So at the very least, uh, this should be retained by the authority since we inherited all the assets of the, the previous EPSA and PESA. Thank you. In, uh, so what we plan to do is to repeal that proclamation? Uh, in whatever legal means, just, just to make Who us able to... Who owns the property to now? Uh, so if we yan? look at the proclamation, uh, it, what it states is it's earmarked for housing projects uh, and uh, APFAB can only retain 60 hectares and the rest should, be, should have been developed by GSIS and SSS. But th since there were no developments introduced and we are actually informed by both GSIS and SSS, in fact GSIS told us that uh, they no longer have a window for housing loan. SSS also formally informed us that they're no longer interested to pursue housing projects in that area. So uh, we are in stop as to how to proceed in utilizing the areas for badly needed housing projects. The property uh, engineer right now, sino kanino ang 
right now there's Kanina no title yet. Eh. There's Awalang no title It's siya. just a proclamation. And uh, okay. we already worked for an approved lot plan for titling for the 60 hectares. Okay. We covered 60 hectares that uh, have been developed uh, that have existing houses. Pero meron siyang technical description. Meron na. Nag Nagpa-survey kami. Sir. The entire Mr. 200 Chair. may technical description yan. Meron doon sa proclamation, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, uh, okay. But now, uh, as a subset, the 60 hectares, we, we came up with our uh, approved plan for the 60 hectares. Because based, uh, while waiting for the amendment or for the repeal, we can already request for titling of that 60 hectares, mm -hmm. which has uh, existing housing constructed by EPSA. Okay. Attorney will uh, request for a position paper. Yes, uh, uh, and we will consult with the new management and the board. Although we, we confirmed that previously we already discussed, I understand, our housing group. But uh, there is a new administration, so we want to get uh, their, their position. And besides, uh, even before, our recommendation is to have a, a, a bill, separate bill, repealing that precisely that PD, so that there will be no legal challenges and issues with regulatory agencies like COA. So be, because uh, there's a limi limitations there, 60 hectares only. But here, it, it, parang 100% na to eh. If it will be part of capitalization, it will be 100%. So that runs counter to the two proclamations in the PD. You know? I think that's the intention to... Uh take the entire 200 hectares. Yes, if, if that was the intention, and assuming that there is no conveyance yet, no title to GSIS and SSS, then we might uh, recommend uh, a, a, a provision that will specifically and expressly repeal PD-545. Thank you, Attorney. And SSS is the next, you know? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, fellow, uh, fellow guests. Uh, we have the same situation. We are of the same uh, situation with the GSIS. Uh, we have not submitted any position paper yet because based on records with our Legislative Affairs Department, we have not been invited when the House version was uh, discussed in the House of Representatives. And... Uh, so we have to ask for direction from the new management, uh, the new Social Security Commission, because uh, admittedly, our previous management has written uh, that we are not interested, but it would appear based on our uh, verifications that this is not uh, sanctioned, or I mean, Management and the Social Security Commission has no knowledge about this uh, letter. So we're, we have to ask for direction from our Social Security Commission, the board of the SSS. And uh, additionally, uh, although under the SS law, the SSS uh, has the power to acquire properties for housing purposes. So it's there in our law. So we, that's the reason why we really have to ask for direction from our Social Security Commission, whether uh, they are still interested or not. Uh, as far as we are also concerned or for, per our verification, there is no title yet given to us from, kasi, Doon sa proclamation po, uh, the property belongs to the public domain. And a, pa a portion of this, uh, of this public domain is uh, a portion to then uh, PTZA and then the SSS and the GSIS. So just like uh, GSIS, we have to submit our position paper if we still be allowed. Um, of course, you'll be uh, allowed to submit your position. Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, just a short manifestation again. Uh, we, we interpose no objections if ever GSIS and SSS would be willing to develop the properties considering that we are in lack of funds for to, to provide for construction of much needed houses for our workers. Secondly, uh, our only request is since I've mentioned that uh, the existing housing units constructed by our predecessors, the EPSA and the PESA, cover more than 90 hectares. We request, if ever, that uh, the arrangement be amended so that instead of just 60, we retain 
the areas covering the existing housing. Thank you, Your Honor. Kailan ba itong presidential proclamation? When was this? Uh, Late 1960s, I think. 1970-1971. And then the presidential decree was in 1974. So from 1970s, hindi pa ako pinapanganak nun ah. Until now, never pa ho na-convey. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, based bakit, on our record. Bakit ho? I mean, that's a long time period. There, uh, based on the presidential decree uh, 545, uh, yun nga po, dapat si Norway and, mm. and after Normally survey, eh. dapat ita-title and then mm. may title na ibigay sa SSS. Pero so we cannot, we cannot uh, build a Ang, housing. We're talking about 200 hectares, no engineer? SSS and GSIS properties? Uh, 200 plus hectares. 200 plus hectares. May but if you consider my request, it will be around 190. One, uh, 190. Because uh, we need the extra 30 hectares that is in excess of the 60 hectares prescribed in the proclamation to be retained by the authority. May nakatira na ho doon ngayon? Yes. And when we came in, there are uh, occupants already. And how many uh, families are there? They are actually two barangays. A barangay, naging barangay na siya? Yes, two how barangays. You, and you plan to take over the property? Uh, how do you... Uh, how do you actually, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> my, my first question then was, uh, how did it become a barangay? How did they become a barangay when they are included in the proclaimed well, area? You mean barangay? It's a, it's a, uh, it's a recognized political yes. unit? Yes, they are. How did that happen? That's why there's, so there are some... Formal settlers uh, sila eh. <laughs> Technically, di ba? Yeah. But when we took over in 2010, they have been there as two barangays from time immemorial. Well, this is... Uh, Yan lang ako nakarinig ng ganyan, ha? I think it's better to just uh, distribute the land. No, how do you... How many, how many families, Mayor? Alam niyo kung ilang families. More or less lang, more or less. How many families are there? Almost 3,000 families. 3,000 families? Ah, wala na yan. Not counting, the, not counting the informal settlers. They are, these are, these are formal settlers because they have lease contracts with us. But okay. there are also informal sets. So out of the there. 200 hectares, how many of those are occupied? Around uh, more than 90 hectares with formal occupants. I don't know the informal settlers. More or less, but the informal, more or less lang. Is it, uh, is it 100? May kalahati kaya? There are, out of the two barangays, there are, we had NHA census of the informal settlers, and there are 1,500 informal Family. settler Family. families so as of 2012. So 1,500 informal family informal, and Out. then you have 3,000 formal. Yeah, correct. So that's 4,500 inhabitants. Families. Families in that area, occupying o occupying 100 hectares. Uh, the 90 hectares is for the formal, formal occupants. Plus yung 1.5. They are this Iba-iba. So let's yeah. say, mga, siguro, mga 100 plus yan siguro, more or less. Yeah. So half of the property. No, the reason why I'm asking, actually it will lead to my second que second uh, question. Meron kasi dito powers to evict. Eh. No? Um, it's a very powerful and uh, explicit uh, uh, powers to be... Um, given to AFAB, and uh, we just want to make sure that uh, uh, the rationale for this, for this power, you know, because uh, we don't want to be accused of, um, of uh, Mr. Of Chair, uh, for the record, those, uh, that provision, specific provision on eviction, has been adopted from the PESA law. Is this in the PESA law, Attorney Brillantes? Yeah, yes. Because I was formerly, before becoming an economic zone manager, the engineering manager of the PESA, okay. under whom 
the building official reports. In fact, what we experience is among the housing units that we are talking of, uh, there are dormitories that uh, when I was the PESA engineering manager, we already uh, condemned in 2004. And as we speak, they are still there because we are unable to to evict the residents. Considering they are formal residents and we have noticed for them to vacate that uh, covered more than a year period, whereas the apartment law requires only substantial period to inform them. But uh, th we we're, were unable to evict them. Uh, we even constructed new dormitories giving them priority to transfer there so that we can renovate the dilapidated dormitories. But since there will be an increase in the rental rates, they don't want to transfer. But uh, honestly, the existing units are, have asbestos roofing. And uh, as I've said, they have been condemned way back 2004. There on dito in the provision, no? uh, AFA may summarily evict any person who refused to vacate such premises without need of any court order. So it's a very powerful uh, provision. But I understand this provision is also the same in PESA. And, and we are working closely with uh, CHR and the uh, Commission on Urban Poor. In fact, uh, they were our, uh, they, we conducted a dialogue with the residents uh, which was facilitated by CHR. And uh, yeah, they, they, they support our plans and moves. And there's always a legal uh, due process. But in the end, we are not, uh, we're unable to <laughs> evict the occupants. Well, I don't want a scenario where in it, these 4,500 families will be running to the mayor and requesting for financial assistance and land. No? Um, Attorney Brillantes, itong provision is in the PESA law? Yes, sir. Although it is stated in, the, in our charter, Your Honor, the practice in PESA is that we still file ejectment cases to the indecent. Question, have, you, have you used this provision in your... None of my knowledge, Your Honor. For every land dispute that involves indecent or illegal settlers, Your Honor, our practice is to file ejectment case. Hindi nyo ginagamit. This will... Um, I don't know if this will ease make your life easier or not, no? but looks like a very powerful uh, provision. But hindi nyo ginagamit. Is there any particular reason other than people rallying outside of your office? Uh, aside from that, Your Honor, uh, I think management as in the opinion that it is still best that we go to court rather than use that provision. No, I'm, I'm just trying to to understand the scenario, no? because uh, like I said, there are, alam ko, may mga informal settlers, may ano, uh, may mga formal settlers, and uh, um, we want to make sure that we are um, fair to everyone, no? including those people living in those uh, public lands. Uh, they might have their own legal reasons why they are there, no? and uh, we don't want a scenario wherein those rights will be trampled and uh, uh, ignored. So um, that's why we want to get uh, a full view of uh, the uh, actual scenario in those properties. Mr. Chair, just to make the picture clearer, uh, the ones that uh, we are intending to, to uh, demolish, dilapidated uh, structures, uh, number to less than 300. But the, the, the rest are uh, well maintained because they are, uh, as I've said, they are uh, bona fide barangay residents. Uh, the ones that we are talking of are those that are living in dormitories and low-cost housing for intended for workers. So who these are around 300 who families. Who constructed the dormitories? EPSA. Uh, this is the old EPSA. EPSA. Pa. Okay. But uh, you will, you're envisioning to use this provision in that 300 more or less families. Much more so for the informal settlers. And for the informal settlers. But those are 1,500 <coughs> informal settlers. And we are working closely with the local government. We have our PIAC, the Project Interagency Inter Committee, discussing the housing and relocation uh, guidelines. And uh, we have also supported by the provincial government as they are identifying a potential uh, 
uh, relocation uh, like a township. Uh, the governor is envisioning putting up a township where these people will be relocated. The local government, uh, and this is the provincial government, I assume, is uh, working towards uh, relocating these families. And may meron na bang concrete plan uh, for that? Uh, the last development is that uh, we submitted to the office of the governor three potential sites for the township within the proclaimed area of the FAB, two of which are in the covered by the proclamations under our uh, covered by our discussion subject uh, provision. So you're relocating those families to that property being uh, discussed here, the yeah, GSIS uh, and the just, SSS property. Uh, we, the governor intends to come up with a, uh, the option of having a well-developed, well-planned township. So who will pay for the development? Well, uh, of course it will be, uh, I think there are arrangements being made with NHA and the other housing housing uh, agencies. So our main problem is we don't have a title to, <laughs> to, the, to the property. So we, that's why we need the title to the property. So, so, so the strategy here is to convey the property to AFAB and AFAB will now uh, subdivide the property to those informal settlers. Is that the process? Yes, Your Honor. In fact, as we speak, uh, uh, we have been talking with the residents of the two barangays and we told them they could uh, hire a common surveyor to prepare their subdivision plan and they acquired the rights for their respective property that they occupy uh, for whatever rights they may have afterwards. Uh, because we told them once we get the title, you cannot uh, get it, it at the same price that was assessed by our appraisal company. So yung 300, is, are the, yung 300 na informal, barangay yun? Yung mga nasa barangay? No, they are formal, but they are oh, uh, in the dormitories. Ah, okay. The rest okay. are residential All units. Right. All right. Okay. No, I'm, I'm trying to understand fully. No, be, Again, I'm trying to cover all bases because uh, when the lives of the people are being, um, being uh, questioned, then um, I need to make sure that uh, we're treating everyone fairly in this case. No? Um, we don't want a scenario wherein uh, uh, families or uh, barangay captains or the local government units will be coming here and protesting over the, the bill. I have to make sure that uh, everything is uh, covered. No. Okay. Rest um, assured this will be, uh, if ever, well coordinated with the LGU. Yeah. In fact, we have a MAPC, Maribeles APAB Steering Committee. It's an, a partnership and we meet monthly to come up with uh, common uh, action plans and decisions, agreements in so far as issues and concerned are, uh, uh, as, uh, in so far as issues and concern are uh, being identified. With but engineer, I want to again no, emphasize that uh, um, in this particular case, uh, buhay kasi ng tao ito eh, no? And uh, uh, I, I welcome the development, I welcome the job creation uh, uh, intention of this bill, but in the process, we're also excluding uh, poor families from the development no? by, you know, by evicting them or, or putting them somewhere else. So I just want to make sure that no one is treated unfairly by this bill. In fact, uh, Mr. Chair, the intention for the township, it's a township, they will have schools, uh, health clinics, and uh, there will be a shuttle that will bring them to economic centers where they, they will be employed. Engineer, as, you, as that, that, that plan uh, crystallized, um, please give us some, uh, maybe a, a letter from the mayor or a Sangunian resolution from the mayor supporting that uh, relocation plan. It will help me, uh, uh, or it will give us some form of comfort that uh, no one is being included, excluded by, by this bill. Um, the relocation plan, uh, the details, okay, no, but uh, what's important to us is 
wala pong maiiwanan o matatanggal dito sa bill na ito. When I say matatanggal, yung, you know, they'll be displaced unfairly you know, because we want to make sure that um, everyone benefits from this bill, including the informal settlers. No? As, as you say, uh, naging barangay na rin ho sila. Eh, no? Actually, as we speak, most of them are gainfully employed right. in the Freeport. That's why they don't want to leave the area. Okay. That's why we're defining an area where they can permanently situate and still be able to okay. report for their work in yeah, the we, 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 uh, no, we, uh, I, I really uh, appreciate that th that you put uh, some plan over uh, some plan on the housing uh, but it will really help us decide and give us some comfort level if the local government will give us that um, resolution no, supporting that plan no. We will comply with your requirement and uh, not not naman next week or ano, no? uh, I am co work in progress yan eh. But uh, as the bill gets the, um, hits the floor, and uh, hopefully hindi naman tayo matanong doon, at least I have some document to show them that, look, hindi namin tinapabayaan ni mga tao. Actually, uh, there's actually a viable housing uh, plan and relocation plan for them. Yeah. In fact, Mr. Chair, even for formal dwellers, we apply the no relocation, no demolition policy. Thank you, Engineer. Thank you. Um, lastly, uh, I have uh, one last question. Uh, in, in, in the bill, there's also a uh, intention to create a police force. No? Um, can you elaborate on that? Um, the AFAB police agents created here under shall have the police authority and maintain law and order within the boundaries of FAB, including conducting police investigations, arrests, search, and seizures for violation of penal laws and tariff and customs laws inside FAB. Um, again, no, this sounds like a, a, a super <coughs> powerful provision. So uh, what's the... Uh, Mr. Chair, where we're coming from is that, uh, as mentioned, we have a very peculiar situation having two barangays within our, within our economic zone and free port. That is why we feel the need for uh, the capability and the authority of uh, our police officers to be able to conduct such functions, investigation and uh, arrests. Because uh, what's happening is when we, uh, when we have uh, situations where we intercept uh, perpetrators, uh, we, s we have to endorse them to the PNP and uh, sometimes we are lost in communication, lost in translation and uh, they end up uh, being not charged. So we want a seamless arrangement so that we can be more effective in enforcing uh, the law and uh, ensuring peace and order within the economic zone and free port. But uh, of course uh, we understand that uh, uh, we need to be handheld by <laughs> the PNP while transitioning, and we are open to any such arrangements. We don't have a representative from the PNP here. No, I was hoping they would join us, but this provision comes after the eviction provision. So, kung binabasa ko to my power to evict, then the my power to arrest. No, parang, <laughs> no, parang uh, this is actually a a a. a a much more powerful provision than the mayor's power you know, because the mayor cannot arrest eh, you know, investigating pa. so um, I think this should be reviewed uh, engineer uh, I would like sana mayroon tayong someone from the PNP to comment but in my own analysis this is actually quite uh, um, it looks like a very controversial provision uh, I think we should review this and uh, consult the PNP you know, regarding this because in my interpretation, you'll have your own police, you know, police force that will have the power of the same of the PNP. You know, and the power to arrest is really uh, uh, something quite uh, unique. Is it a genitong power? What we have, sir, in Section 10 of our charter is that 
the PESA can establish its own quote unquote internal security. Yes, so, so in that line, sir, uh, it doesn't follow that we have the exclusive authority to conduct police investigation and arrest. Security to, uh, uh, for the purposes of securing your zones. Yes, right? sir. Uh, particularly, your honor, public zones. Right. But this one, kasi, is uh, explicit police force agents. Eh. So uh, it has probably the same powers as the PNP. Um, engineer, please, review na lang to, but uh, I think this will be a very controversial uh, provision. <coughs> and I personally think uh, this should, I personally think this should be removed. Uh, yeah, we will and review and uh, consult uh, other legal. I think this should be reduced to uh, the same provision as uh, uh, establishing a security force for purposing of for the purpose of securing your economic zones. No? Any other comments? Meron ba akong hindi na 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 na, na recognize any anyone who wants to uh, anyone who wants to uh, make any last comments? Anyone who uh, I haven't wala ba akong na ano na miss dito? Kung wala naman po um I just have a few uh, reminders to everyone. First, the position paper. I would really appreciate uh, uh, your position paper. And um, please submit it to us uh, one week in one week's time, so July 9. Is that possible? Please submit to us uh, your position paper on or before July 9. And uh, I just have some specific uh, request um, from PESA. We would like to know the uh, number of locators in Bataan, uh, Attorney Berliantes. And uh, of course, your um, position paper because you'll be uh, the one directly affected by this bill. And then from GCG, uh, I think we, I mentioned earlier no, the link between um, your organization and um, AFAB through the nominees and of course the peer evaluation um, mechanism of uh, GCG and then DOF um, the reposition paper also and the revenue impact uh, it's important to understand also the revenue impact because uh, you know, as you mentioned earlier there are a lot of new uh, fiscal incentives being proposed in this bill uh, the increase in export ratios. So those have revenue impact and we need to understand what will be the impact to government collections no, if we do approve this bill. Right. And then um, BSP's uh, supplemental position paper and then uh, the position paper of GSIS and uh, SSS also. All right. Mr. Chair, can I make one final request? Yes. Uh, for Engineer. addition, for consideration by uh, the committee. Uh, we would like to manifest our request that uh, the name of the authority be revised or amended from AFAB to FAB also. Because there has been confusion uh, as to the location and the authority. They say uh, uh, we complain to the FAB, but we are AFAB. The authority is the AFAB. So we want to go to the AFAB, but they're referring to the Freeport. So that's why our proposal is, uh, since we adopted the name FAB Freeport Area of Bataan as our location for the Freeport, uh, we humbly request that uh, the, the name of the agency, the governing body, be also amended to the Freeport Authority of Bataan. So it will both be FAB. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your yeah. Honor. Noted, the uh, engineer will, um, uh, well, you can include that in your position paper also, uh, so that we can uh, amend. Uh, accordingly. All right, Attorney. Your Honor, I would like to manifest that the Office of Congressman Garcia be allowed to submit additional formal amendments uh, taking into consideration the result of uh, this public hearing. Yes, Thank uh, you. you made er mention earlier that uh, you prefer the Senate version over the House version. But we still have additional amendments okay, to that so version. Yeah, yeah because uh, there are 
slightly differences eh, in these two versions. Um, we have to reconcile also these two versions. No? So um, yeah, after uh, I'm sure you picked up a lot of uh, information and, and, and suggestions here, uh, feel free to send it to us. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. All right, any, any last words? Again, thank you very much for your time and maraming maraming salamat po for participating. Meeting is uh, suspended. <laughs>